It's us, man. We're on. We can make sure the restream's picking it up. Restream picking us up. That's us right there. It's a little behind. Like, there's going to be like about eight seconds delay. Yep. So when we see something, people are going to see something as well. And that's, it is. There we are. That's us, man. And then we'll eventually see. Um, when we click on this. should see people as they're popping in. We'll see people comment too. Okay. We'll turn this all the way up. Yeah, that's us, man. Technology. I know, right? I can just move all this stuff around. I can move this microphone just a little bit closer. It's going to annoy some people because they're going to just see this microphone in there. Yeah, we don't need that looking all crazy. Yeah, you just wanted to kind of pick it up because over here you can see our readings. Of, it's kind of on the lower side. So we'll probably hike it up a bit. Max it out. Affects the sensitivity of it, but yeah, we're on, man. All right, good deal. I'm sure it's making me look... <laughs> You look good. <laughs> no, <laughs> you look good. Not compared to like the guys that you trained back in the days. Well, these guys were yoked. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, fitness is relative. So, I mean, if you, um, like I tell people all the time, it's not what you what you look like necessarily. It's how you how you feel and you know what you can do. That's so, fair. You got all these guys that are like really uh, squishy, or they're like real big muscle, and then it's just for show. Yeah, you know, a lot of times when, especially like when I was doing the, the whole CrossFit thing, it's functional fitness, right? So think about like the game of football. Football doesn't necessarily care what you look like. It's if you can get the ball across the goal line. Right. You know, so uh, essentially it doesn't really matter. Or you have like a big like defensive lineman and he doesn't need to be the most physically fit guy. He's literally, his purpose is I'm stopping this guy from getting it past me. That's what you can look at, um, like a big solid piece of granite. Yeah, but then people like can that. run around granite, so you still have to build a, still have to move some sort. Yeah, we got all kinds of people hopping in. All right. What's up, Amy? Chris? Amy, how you doing? Thanks for joining the uh, Chris Morrell and Titus show. We have special guest Brandon here with us today. What's going on? We're going to talk about some dog training and some woodworking, possibly some uh, some whittling, if you will. Yeah. Some chiseling and some, uh, I don't know, amateur uh, nude photography. We're going to uh, do that too. Um, maybe some some porn of some sort with, with this thing right yeah, here. I, don't know what I would that touch is. it really lightly because it's probably still got some lube on it. Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> let's get this out of my face. Right. Yeah, so... Um, Brandon's really not saying much right now, so I guess I'll jump on jump on this yeah, thing. What's great about this is it's all live, so you don't really have to feel you don't have to feel the air. And, and uh, what I'll say, um, I'll get into it. I was a little thrown off in the very beginning. Uh, if you guys have never watched this show before, uh, we call it Trade Skills. We usually like to interview really cool, really skilled, um, just awesome people. Have drink, you know, have a couple drinks with them, kind of talk about what they do, have a good time. It's not super professional. It's not super. There's, Hanging out. Yeah, we lost all professionalism when he invited me on here, I would have to say. so That's okay, though. That's um, okay. We're just hanging out, man. Yeah. We're hanging so, out. We're having a couple brews. So if you guys they know me, and if not, I'm Brandon. You can follow me uh, if you see down here at the bottom. Bumio on Instagram and Facebook, and you, you should be able to find me. And if you want to follow Chris over here, you see it down at the bottom. Look at it looking nice. Not these cans, <laughs> but uh, what's under the cans is what's important. Um, Actually, what's in the cans? It is, yeah. Is, and we'll definitely most, get to most that. Important. And he, he's a, kind of like a sour kind of guy, so I got some not all sours, but some fruit stuff. Yeah, there. well, I mean, you know, I don't discriminate when it comes to beer. Just not um, IPAs, right? Yeah, well, I'm just not a big IPA fan. Um, I feel like I've sold you one or two at Mellow before. You have, and I did not appreciate that. Um, and I realized how country when I said that I sound when I said that. I'm not an IPA fan. I like my know? beer to taste like beer. I like my beer like I like my violence. Domestic. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Uh, we do not promote domestic no, violence. We don't. No, we don't. No, we will have some controlled violence here in just a minute when uh, when Titus, who's over here taking a nap, um, we'll get him uh, get him on here in just a second so he can say, hey, that, yeah, there's a nice shot of Titus's rear end right there for everybody to see. Ta-da! Um, and now he's <laughs> over here. All right, hey, buddy. No, place. No, place. Um, so essentially, and I'll let me raise that up for him a little bit, so Titus can say hello to everyone. Good boy. Right. He's like, oh, you called me, right? That's right. All right. Okay, so. All right, so the... Um, For those who don't know you... My name is Chris Morrell. I am the owner of Revolutionary Canine. Um, I've been in Albany for a while now. I guess I've been here long enough to be an Albanian. I moved here when I was 13 years old and uh, just kind of planted roots. Um, then opened up a, a business, what seems like 100 years ago, uh, in a fitness industry. I've been in the fitness industry for about 20 years and then sold that, got out of that, went back to training dogs. I did do a little training for, um, for hunting dogs years back and, um, and then got in now to, um, to, to training pets, training working dogs. We do uh, scent detection, we do apprehension, we do personal protection, of course, um, advanced obedience, basic obedience, things of that nature. Um, but, um, but outside of that, I just enjoy playing with dogs all day. I found that I like dogs more so than I like people most yeah. days. But what it's, uh, it's really gotten me to, since I'm around dogs so much and not around people as much, I really do enjoy when I get to sit down and talk to people. So um, that's just for the camera. But yeah, actually. Um, but so, so it's a great opportunity to do this, hang out with Brandon. I've known Brandon for years. We used to work together in the mall. Um, FYE, represent. Yep, the F to the Y to the E, man. Yeah, we can call out FYE. They don't, they're not here anymore, so they can't hit nah. us with anything. Yeah. Smelling all that salt dust over there. Screw those guys. Um, but yeah, so I've known Brandon for quite some time now. And yeah, you were, you were yoked back then. And, uh, and then you got into, you started working at what, PT? Mm -hmm. And then you started doing personal training. Right. And then didn't you, you opened up like Albany's first CrossFit gym. Like nobody, yeah, nobody I, knew what the hell CrossFit was. And you're like, guys, I'm going to show you. I'm going to, I'm going to pump you whoop. Yeah, wild and crazy guys. And he, he did it, and uh, at that point, nobody knew what the hell it was. He got a lot of people jacked, yep. a lot of people in shape. It was fun times. Um, I was actually the first CrossFit affiliate in the state of Georgia, I believe, below Atlanta. So when, um, when we affiliated, we, there was only like 600 affiliates worldwide, and um, we really had to brand the CrossFit name yeah. um, in the area, and, and now, I, I mean, I, they come and go, but um, but World Camp is still flourishing, doing great. Um, very happy to see that, and other other um, other gyms have essentially fallen by the wayside. Yeah, you know, so it's it's good to see that um, that something I created or at least brought to the area has has stayed. There's that long. Nobody knew who it, like knew, nobody knew what it was really. Yeah, you came out with it, and I was like, what the hell? Like, so none of I won't say none of, but most of the stuff in CrossFit is you know really really old workouts right really old training really old work workouts olympic lifting stuff like that right like i think crossfit brought uh kipping right that was kind of a thing that crossfit brought in or uh, was it already there before yeah then? actually crossfit didn't bring anything to the table just kind of brought um, all of it together yeah it's greg glassman um if anyone knows anything about crossfit they obviously know who greg greg glassman is he's the one that created or uh trademarked crossfit and greg did a an amazing thing with the fact that he took elements from different forms of working out. I'm gonna let you read that because if I get caught up reading that, then, <laughs> No, I'm just, um, there's so, just so many people that are popping in. We got Phil, we got Phil Arnold, I've known him for years. We got uh, Tori, Belgian. We got, uh, she's saying all kinds of stuff. We got Amber Moore, Jody Mann, Nicole. We got just tons, Mama Sharon. We got tons of people that just popped in. Yeah. Um, Tori said, my boyfriend wants uh, that dog and coffee shirt. This one right here. How can I get one? 
Well, actually, um, the guy that used to come into Sunny and get the pulled chicken and double sweet potato, no bread. <laughs> was that you? That's me. Uh, the the fact that me. he re- that Calvin remembers that. Yeah, and I'm not sure what happened to Sunny's. Uh, they're maybe, coming back. Really? Yeah, they're about to open back up. I'm okay. gonna be tearing the sweet potatoes up. Well, that's good, Sean. Um, What's so real quick, let me just oh, let me finish the Greg well, Glassman yeah. thing. Okay, so Greg Glassman that um, basically took different elements from different forms of fitness, whether it be sport related, uh, weightlifting, Olympic weightlifting, gymnastics, um, uh, plyometrics, different elements from different fitness regimens and basically put them together yeah. and said, hey, this is called CrossFit. Um, and he's a freaking millionaire now, you know, because of it. So it's kind of like CrossFit, the reason it got such a bad rap in the very beginning is it was a bunch of these just under, it's very underground grassroots type stuff and, and people just doing like crazy things people throwing up on the sidewalks and um, you know getting things like rhabdomyolysis and stuff like that but um, in the grand scheme of things CrossFit actually turned out to be very good because it's just a functional fitness workout regimen that's constantly varied so right. it's not like you go in and do chest one day back one day legs one day it's uh, basically it's um, I guess a hodgepodge of all of that, yeah. but if you do it correctly and if you have good programming, then it's obviously done in a way that your body can um, maximize itself to its fullest potential. Um, I will have to say, honestly, that once I walked out of the CrossFit gym, I'm not a big CrossFit guy anymore. I still do things that get my heart rate elevated. I still do things and I work out on a regular basis. Um, but um, the CrossFit, for me, anyway, just kind of ran its course. So. Um, but um, but that's kind of where we're at with that. I need to do CrossFit or something. <laughs> that's uh, that's Zach uh, Russell. And then there's Bobby Springwater. Sounds good. Audio is a bit delayed. Sorry about that. Uh, you guys getting good audio on Facebook? Let us know what's going on. I'm getting good connection, so I don't really see what's up. All right, so real quick, I'm just going to go down because this is all super new to me. Uh, seeing how people are watching, um, you know, I see Courtney on here, Cindy Strickland. Um, real quick, guys, we're going to be talking a lot about dogs, and um, I will say that Cindy Strickland is a very, very reputable uh, breeder for German Shepherds here in South Georgia. Um, I've had the opportunity to meet her and um, see her dogs. I've had several of her, her dogs come through the, uh, the training facility, and all of them are great. So if you are in the market, uh, and of course I think we're going to be talking a little bit about breeds and breed specifications and stuff like that tonight, um, and, and I'm sure the German Shepherd question is going to come up. Um, so, but I would like to say if you are in the market for a German Shepherd, she's, uh, she's a good one to go to, very knowledgeable about the breed, has several different lines over there to choose from and and with a German Shepherd you definitely want to go through a reputable reputable breeder um, see if there's any please there you go Courtney <laughs> what'd you say <laughs> oh okay he said Brandon um, she's an asshole yeah so Victoria that is um, Titus essentially is a um, a Dutch Shepherd okay which is basically you have your German Shepherd you have your Belgian Malinois then you have your your Dutch Shepherd um, as far as drives, it's kind of a um, you know a running joke that you have your German Shepherd, which is a high drive dog, and you have your Belgian Malinois, which is like a German Shepherd on crack, and then you have your Dutch Shepherd, which is like your Belgian Malinois on crack. So, but Titus, the reason I brought him tonight, he's what I would say would be like a Pets Plus. Titus is one of my personal dogs. You could take Titus into a kindergarten classroom, and he would be just fine letting kids pet on him and things like that. But um, as you can see from some of my videos that I post on Facebook or Instagram, he's also, he gets after it pretty good. So um, it's, it's neat how you can have that on switch, off switch kind yeah. of deal with these dogs if they're, um, if they're trained correctly. I don't think we'll be doing any flex offs tonight. No, maybe he's got maybe, me. He's yeah. got me beat. Now we'll 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 definitely do some drinking. I'm gonna go ahead and open mm-hmm. one up. I feel like that kind of works. Although I did bring him uh, a nicely fitted shirt for him to wear. He told me he was a large. I think he fit fit a little bit. So. Yeah. No. I, I. You know. I had. Uh, <laughs> if y'all know Matt Matt over at the Rib Shack, he brought me a whole rack of ribs yesterday. So I'm feeling it today, and everything is just a little extra big today. 
and he brought me some of that corn with jalapenos and like cream cheese. I don't know, dude. It was amazing. But yeah, yeah, I'm feeling it today. <laughs> all right, so what do we have here? This is all you get is all you get. It's a hazy sour from Orpheus, and Orpheus uh, is. It's a hazy sour from your Orpheus. Yes, from your Orpheus. That's not. Doesn't sound good. It smells good. Uh, your his his Orpheus smells good. Hands pretty. It looks like a like a Michelangelo. I don't know how well that's showing up. All you get is all you get. So we have an error. So. Yeah, I think that's just. I'm seeing it all fine on this. He says, what are your thoughts on American Blu-ray Shepherds? Blue Bay Shepherds. American Blue Bay Shepherds. I'm going to actually say I've never come in contact with an American Blue Bay Shepherd. I'll tell you what I will do, though, is give me two seconds. You will look that up. Let me get, let you guys take a gander at this. Oh, boy, that is really off center. Look center on my camera, but not on that one. Is that looking more better? Yeah. Okay, so the Blue Bay Shepherd appears to be one massive dog. Um, now, there's a, obviously some uh, wolf characteristics in there, but um, so the, um, man, they are absolutely beautiful, though. That is for sure. Now, as far as the um, the temperament, I mean, to be honest with you, I could not a tell you uh, just because I have not personally. I've I've had the opportunity to work with several different breeds, but that particular dog right there, my friend, I have not had the pleasure of working with. But um, but you can definitely tell it's only a couple generations off of a wolf or a coyote. But um, but yeah, German shepherds, man, they. Um, you know, obviously shepherds are, are herding dogs and they, they need to have a job, you know, and that's the, the biggest thing that I think people get into trouble with, with whether it be a German shepherd, a, a Malawamp, uh, a Dutch shepherd, is the fact that they get these dogs and they maybe live in an apartment or they live in a small house in the city and they just don't have room for these dogs and they get bored very, very easily. So you have to be very careful that you get the dog something to do okay and like titus for example of course i have 10 acres there's mm. plenty of room you know for these guys to get out and work but we we're constantly doing bite work we're constantly doing uh search and rescue type things that's okay. going to um just case yeah. has a question on there but um but essentially the um but i i to to be 100 percent honest with you and i like to be as transparent as possible uh, I've never had the opportunity to work with that particular shepherd, so I couldn't tell you much about it. So Gina is your aunt? Yeah. You know okay. Gina? I do. Well, Gina, I worked at the radio station again. What did you do at the radio station? Absolutely nothing. I'll tell you what I did at the radio station. I'm oh, honest with you. I am so sorry, guys. Like, <laughs> I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what I did at the radio station. I was basically the trade guy. So at the radio station, if you're in sales, you have six months of, um, of a base pay. Right. And during that time, they pay you your base. And then obviously you have to build up your clientele to, um, to in essence, cover your base plus whatever else. Right. you would like to make and this you're just you end up being 100 percent commission your commission your sell you're yeah. going 100 percent commission i'm gonna tell you this i don't like to sell anything okay even in the uh the fitness industry like i didn't sell fitness i just said hey you want to work out here we go um so i was actually very terrible at sales <laughs> you had hair then i couldn't I, imagine that i did i had hair and actually she cut my hair once she in did the she office. used to cut hair yeah, yeah. in the office um she brought her little kit in and and shake me up and but and then what was that hair like? I, I couldn't imagine you with hair. I, I've the whole time I've known you. So at FYE when you were making you know little thieves crap their pants and stuff, yeah. like you always just had the bald head thing going on. Well, so essentially what I would do in the um, in that that time I would shave my head and just let it grow. 
and then I would get tired of the length and I would just shave it again. I haven't paid for a haircut since I was in ninth grade in high school. So um, at least you didn't do the comb over. Like, uh, was it Mitch? Is that who it was? That worked with us? Yes. <laughs> yes. The... Um, I've never been a big, you know, I've got my father's, like, this little receding deal right here. So um, I'm just not not that guy. I don't want to don't want to be the comb over guy. So, but yeah, the radio, uh, speaking of that, was the, um, the first, the only job I ever got fired. Sales weren't where they're at, where can't. they needed to be. Yeah, you didn't really like sales, um, so you can't really... You well, know. it was one of those things that when I was there, they said, hey, man, you got a great personality. Go down and get this, um, get all of our vans outfitted with uh, stereo systems and alarm systems. And so I did that, but I did that during my my base, and it was a trade-out, so there was actually no monetary gain. So they got all this free stuff mm. for advertising, and then they basically said that I wasn't cutting it. So... Did Gina do that? Am I gonna have to get onto her about that? No, no. She did cut my hair too. <laughs> Maybe she can tape that beard up for you a little bit. Yeah, I need it cleaned up a little bit. I'm just letting my hair so curly that like the hair is a lot longer than it looks. It goes down to here. It's just mm -hmm. so curly. It just kind of. And yeah. some days the hairs will be straight, and some days they'll be. Yeah. It's hard to tell. It's just with the weather. Courtney says, "Can you get?" Uh, you need the dog to stop peeing in the dining room even though it's been outside for 30 minutes. Yeah, so this is the thing. And is that a Datsun that you were saying? Yes. Yeah, good luck. Good Datsuns shabby. are the um, they're the most lovable. We have two Datsuns. Yeah. And uh, they, are the, the, they are an awesome, awesome breed. But they are very uh, temperamental. Um, and they don't like to... I mean, they're, if you if you were to, like, range dogs as far as difficulty to train, I would say it would probably be uh, your French Bulldogs. Then, These would be the hardest? Yeah, like the, 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 the most hard-headed dogs out there. Your French Bulldogs would have to be first, okay? Mm -hmm. I would say then probably your Huskies, and then Dotsons would be somewhere right around in there. Oh, um, but... Um, but the big thing with the the house training is the dog has to be on a regimen. Okay, the dog has to be on a schedule as far as when it gets let out. Right. Because essentially they're going to <clears throat> look for that, and of course you can adjust their feeding and adjust their water intake throughout the day to to help with that. But um, you know the crate is a great option. Um, what I like to do with uh, with the dogs is they'll go in the crate. Excuse me. I'll feed them in the crate. Mm -hmm. um, they enjoy the crate. Nobody wants to crap on their dinner table, so they don't essentially mess in the crate. Right. Um, and then just get them on a routine to where they know they're going out X amount of time. And what you may want to do is kind of control the the water intake. If um, if they Dotson's obviously their bladder has to be super super small. Um, so just control their water intake a little bit. So that would be. That'd be the way, that would be where I would start, Courtney, and is, um, just make sure you keep the dogs on somewhat of a schedule. And if you're not going to be home, don't let them free reign and run. Have them in a, a little space that they don't want to mess up because dogs are pretty, uh, pretty territorial in the aspect of they don't want to mess up their own little area. Yeah. So, um, so they'll be less apt to, to use the bathroom in there. That's fair. So, yeah. I don't like to pee in my bed. So I learned at a young age... <laughs> get up and go use the bathroom so that's fair we have tons and tons of people popping in yes bassets are stubborn af they are also Bassett right Brown. they He's are also right in there as well so um i'm guessing that was something terrier and a jack russell mm -hmm. in the proper size crate yeah definitely the definitely the the size of the crate matters. You want you want the crate to be big enough where the dog can go in, turn around, lay down. They don't need to have a whole bunch of room because if they have a ton of room, they can go mess in the corner and then get away from it. Right. You you know, and as disgusting it as is as it is, if the dog you know craps in the kennel, you want him to have to lay in it because obviously, if there's no incentive for him not to. Right. Because um, dogs, I mean. Um, you would think that just by how some of them are, they love to be dirty. 
but they really don't. So if they, they mess in the kennel, they don't want to sit there and lay in it. So they can go, if the kennel is too big, they can go off to the, the corner, use the restroom in there, and then... Not be laying in their own crap, yeah. and their feces just laying around everywhere. That's right. That's so you want to make it just big enough where they can get in, go in, turn around. Um, you don't want them, obviously, where you have to back them in and they can just be in one spot, but you don't want it so big that they can dance around and do a whole lot of moving. That's fair. So... I like how well trained yours is just sitting over here. I mean, that's just a testament to your training. Well, I mean, he's um, he's had a pretty long day. You oh, know? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I hit the ground running. Uh, usually, what's today? Today's Monday. Yeah. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday routine is basically I'll get up in the morning, um, get the dogs where they need to be, and I'll go to the gym. Uh, I have devoted finally about I guess six eight weeks ago said, hey man, you know I got to start taking some time for myself because work, working out and fitness used to be such a huge part of my life and then when I walked away from it it was like I just don't want to do it anymore like I didn't want to do anything started to get a little, I started to get you know some of that and that. I started drinking you know a little more of this stuff and um, and you know living my best life you know fat and happy but uh, then it got to be where I just needed to take that time so on Monday Wednesday Friday um, I take an hour to an hour and a half for myself to just go to the gym and um, then I come back, and then once I get back, it's off to the races. I had um, a dog going home today, so I had a, had a take-home session with someone. And right. that's the thing that I am adamant about with the dog training. The dogs are the easy part. You know, when people, and we can get in the training all you want and kind of round table about whatever, but, you know, you can train a dog to do anything. But if the owner is not on board and they can't speak the same language, if right. they can't, um, I tell people all the time, I just need them to be basically just a better looking version of me. I need them to speak like me. I right. need them to talk, uh, uh, be as effective with their communication as possible. Um, and that way the dog, the training actually adheres to it. So, yeah, so this, this individual um, uh, is talking about chewing. So one thing that you will understand about me as far as dog training I am what they call a balanced dog trainer you know I give rewards I give corrections and and the way you look at it is you want to reward the behavior that you want the wanted behavior if you will so like for instance I told Titus to go to a place and there's a little box over here and that he's on um, that's the wanted behavior he did what I wanted him to do and he's continuing to stay there so I'll reward that behavior uh, in the training process, but if he were to perform an unwanted behavior, meaning get off the, mm -hmm. the thing, then I would correct him. And of course, um, there's a couple of different ways you can correct. Um, you know, you can use certain tools like uh, pinch collars, loop leashes, things of that nature. Um, withholding food is actually a form of a negative, so it could be viewed as a correction. Right. And a lot of your purely positive trainers, um, they don't want to admit that, but it is. I mean, if I'm saying, hey, sit or do something and you don't do it, so I'm withholding your food, that's obviously a negative, right? right. So if, um, <clears throat> I mean, just by definition alone, negative is a negative, negative versus yeah. purely positive. So, um, but on the chewing thing, if the, that's an unwanted behavior, obviously, so you have to essentially mark that as an unwanted behavior. And I just use the word no, okay? Um, basically no, and it's followed with a correction. And um, typically with puppies, I don't do corrections in the beginning with any kind of like pinch collar or anything like that. It's all just uh, reward based, purely positive type stuff just to get them molded into doing what I right. want them to do. But once they have shown that they actually learn, they know what command, what the command is uh, and know how to get their body in those positions, I'll start correcting, marking those and, and correcting. And, and the same thing with chewing, jumping, counter surfing, stuff like that. You have to mark that as unwanted behavior, correct it. And then go on about your business. Don't, I tell people all the time, don't get emotionally attached to the training because you can, like, I deal with so many dogs a day that it's easy to get, it's easy to get frustrated. Right. Okay. Especially like with my own dogs. I know they're good. I know that they know these things, but then if they want to act up, it's uber frustrating because I know I've put the time in there. Um, but, um, but you can't get emotionally attached to the training to where your heart rate gets elevated, your blood pressure goes up, and you're overcorrecting the dog. You have to be super fair and super just with the dog because if you're not, 
the dog is going to pick up on that, and it's it's just not it's not worth it. The dog will end up shutting down on you, not wanting to work for you. Right. Um, it, it's kind of like if if I worked for you, and you just withheld my pay for no reason. Yeah. I mean that's not fair, right? No. So um, so essentially, I'm not going to have respect for you now. If I if you come to me and you say, Hey, Chris, I want you to come do this show with me. I'm going to pay you X amount of dollars, uh, but this these are your this is your job. If you don't do your job, I'm not going to pay you. I may even smack you, but um, if uh, if you do your job, this is what you're going to get. Well, let's say I come and I do my job, and you still smack me, or even worse, you correct <clears throat> me for something you never taught me to do. Right. Es right. Essentially, the um, essentially the the communication system is so so screwed up that that nobody's nobody's having fun with it. Yeah, we have. Uh, is it? No, it's not. It is another Orpheus. It's um, what you get is what you get is the name of it. I think it's the actual name. Is it all you get is what you get, or it's a it's a sour. It's a hazy sour from Orpheus. And it's got like the Michelangelo, David touching fingers kind of, or or God and, mm -hmm. and David, or Adam. God and Adam is actually what it is. But that's the same same company. But what you were saying earlier about um kind of about tra training owners as well yeah like you can train the dogs all you want but if the owners think that they're just going to come back and it's just all going to be good i mean the owners are going to have to kind of reinforce this stuff right they're going to they're just just as much held accountable as the dogs are as well like if you aren't when you train the dogs to do certain things or respond to certain things and the owners don't keep up with it and they're wondering what's going on with their right. dogs well it's kind of like this I do, this is me personally, now my personal opinions on dog training, you know, you can, I, the reason I do what I do is because I believe it works, right? right? I have, I've had great success with my methods and how I'm doing things, but don't take it as biblical, you right. know, because there's, there's all kind of great trainers out there that use different methods, and my method is my method because I feel like it works. Just like going back to the CrossFit thing, I did CrossFit because at that time, I felt like that was the best fitness regimen for your athletes, for your law enforcement, for your military, for people that were, um, were doing more active type stuff. I felt that, so therefore I stuck to that. So what I say about dog training is not the gospel, it's just what I feel is right. So right. please understand that as we're roundtabling about this, if you find something in a book somewhere that debunks what I'm doing, that's fine. I mean, but I don't care. Like, I really don't care what right. your book says because I know over the course of the last several years and the hundreds of dogs that I've worked with, what I'm doing is, um, is working for me. Is that thing on my face? Uh, I haven't activated it yet. Oh, okay. So I've got to kind of adjust. It's not... I looked over this side and, is what and there was see. a turtle on my face and I just yeah. want to make sure, which is probably better for you guys, but... Yeah, um, you guys want to see that? <laughs> there it is. Um, so, remind me what we're doing. You threw me with a turtle. Yeah, that's what the turtle shell does. You can't help it. It just debunks it is, the whole thing. It was for a Mario Kart episode. Okay. Um, so, what were off. we talking about? Um, you were talking about like what people see or reading a book versus owners. Owners, okay. You were talking about the um, uh, the owners have to keep up with the training, right? Okay. So the reason I do a three week board and train, like the three week board and train, is the shortest amount of time I'm going to take a dog. If you come to me and say, "Hey, Chris, take my dog for a week and see what you do," I'm going to say, "Hey, Brian, I'm not doing it. I'll yeah. show you some things. I'll be glad to do that. You come out and." And work with me, but I'm not going to take your dog for a week or two weeks. Right, there's because, only so much you can do within that. Period. Well, it's not just that; it takes three weeks to get into a dog's long-term memory. Okay. So I'll give you a perfect example. Um, I had a dog come down from Chicago for from a, uh, for a lady um, to work on aggression issues and behavior behavior uh, meaning uh, obedience and things of that nature. The dog was with me for a little while went uh, back to Chicago by way of um, New Jersey, stayed in New Jersey for right. a little bit with her son or something like that, and then went back to Chicago. Well, the dog just started act regressing, basically. Right. And so I was talking to the owner, and um, I said, look, bring the dog back. If you're ever coming back down this way, bring the dog back with you. 
the dog immediately gets out of the car. They actually come, they were going out to the beach, so they come through Albany on the way to the beach. Um, I said, give me three minutes. And within that three minutes time, speaking to the dog in the language that, that meaning the communication system, not English or German right. or anything like that as the language, but the communication system, um, the dog quickly went right back to where it was. So it's not, what you're saying is accurate. The owners do have to keep up with the training um, but the, the training is always going to be there. Once the dog has had three weeks of extensive obedience training, the training will always be there. It's whether or not the owner chooses to do what we say do. Right. It's kind of like I can tell someone till I'm blue in the face. You're going to give the command. The dog's either going to do it or they don't. I mean, there's, there's, there's two options. There's A and B. Yes, no. Okay. Uh, there's no C. Right? You know. Right. So essentially... If the dog doesn't do the command, you are to mark it, correct it, and then say the command again. I can say this until I'm blue in the face. It's a flow chart. Yeah, it is exactly a flow chart. Um, and I can say this until I'm blue in the face, but that same owner will say, sit, 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 sit. sit. You know, and, yeah. just, and at no point does the dog understand, okay, now this is the, the H&IC. This is who I need to listen to, you know, um, because that owner is not willing to take a step back, give the dog a command, the dog doesn't do the command, no, correction, sit. Now the dog's like, oh, okay, you mean business, yeah. right? And it's not like we're using compulsion training with the dog because we're very fair. And once the dog learns the behavior, it, it should be held accountable, right? right? And so that's the big thing about, um, about the, the speaking to the dogs in a, that certain communication is going to be a lot more effective. So, yes, it is up to the owners to continue with that versus, um, so it's not necessarily the owner has to get out in the yard and train the dog every day. Right, right. That's, that's not the case at all. So. Uh, Mason said, how much do you, so I don't know if you ever want to get into pricing on here, if that's just kind of like a per case basis or if you guys, if you have prices listed. Now, no, Mason, uh, you're, you're talking about defense training. Does that mean like protection? For dogs, is that is that what I'm kind of getting at? I do know he has a dog and he keeps him in a crate. So, well, doesn't keep him, but he, he there's some crate used mm -hmm. also. Yeah, I'm assuming that he's probably talking about um, um, protection work, right? Uh, and that's that's the thing about protection work is the fact that you have to have the right dog first and foremost. You can't just, I mean, you can put a cat in the oven, but it won't make it a biscuit, right? You see what I'm saying? Like you just can't. There's certain, um, you, you, may, you may watch the movie 300, Yeah. you know, in the very beginning where they just throw babies off the cliff if they're not what they... <laughs> they're like, I hope you, you know, <laughs> yeah. if you don't uh, survive, it's not the Spartan way, it wasn't meant to be. Yeah, you're not strong enough, you know, so basically if um, the dog is not the right dog for the job, then you're, you're really just, you're wasting your time, you're, um, and I'm not saying that these aren't make sure I word this correctly because I don't want you to think that I'm saying that there are dogs out there that are, are worthless because that's not what I'm saying at all, but specific jobs. Like there right. are dogs out there that will not protect you. They just will not do it. I mean, I even think like Dateline NBC or somebody did some special to see if people's dogs would protect them and 99% and of them just ran off. Um, <laughs> somebody came up and grabbed the first dog gone. Yeah, and so, and that's, that's the thing about, like I brought some... If you go to my Facebook page or if you go to my Instagram, you'll see dogs biting uh, sleeves, dogs biting suits, and there's all there's all sorts of um, basically segues to getting someone, getting a dog to be comfortable with a live bite. Right. Okay. Um, you want to make that out of a game, and right. essentially from the puppy all the way up to the adult. And we're going to get into that later. Yeah. Um, you make it a game, and so you can't just take any dog and turn him into a personal protection dog because that's it may not be in that dog's um, genetical makeup if you will it's kind of like uh, there's a reason I don't play in the NBA I mean 6'2 I'm white I'm a little slow you know so it's just that's just part of it and I'm okay with that but so I do other things so Adam I'm guessing Adam is also a prestigious uh, canine yep Adam said you're speaking with the king of training, or the true, uh, speaking with one of the true kings of training, this guy, 
uh, he's the guy who uh, made me get into the business. Yep. Appreciate you saying that, Adam. Um, yeah, I had the opportunity to work with um, with Adam and his and a couple of his dogs, and he, um, you know, it's like anything else. It's um, th- this is the thing with business. Adam's out of Tallahassee, right. and I've had the opportunity to to hang out with uh, Adam uh, for several several times, working dogs and and talking to him about dog training, and he was. He just wanted to be a dog trainer because he enjoyed it that much. And um, my thing has always been just help where you can, you right. know. And and I don't. I mean, at best, I give him advice from time to time, um, but I wouldn't certainly not take credit for any of his success. Um, but but it's the thing about it. It's just like if you get into to the aspect of dog training. Or anything. If I've always believed that if you are passionate about what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. So, um, and I have, I've had two great runs with businesses that I've been super passionate about. That's the fitness industry first and foremost, and then the dogs. Um, so honestly, like the worst day at my job right now is probably pretty close to the best day that most people have. Um, at their job just because I love it so much but yeah no Adam runs a a good operation out of Tallahassee I'm trying to shorten this a bit so we can see both of the uh, the chats so back to what you were you were asking Mason if you're still on um, it varies as far as the cost I mean the the four week board and train is where I would start and we could just certainly just do uh, some tests run some tests on your dog to see if your dog even has that capability or the desire. Uh, every dog, I believe, is going to have some sort of protection aspect. You know, if somebody breaks in your house, the dog is going to bark. You know, that's right. the first line of protection. But um, but as far as that goes, it's not um, uh, it's not going to be something that we can just turn turn your dog into a, a protection dog if it's not there. So. I would hate to even quote you anything, man, um, in this kind of format because I don't, I don't know what the uh, the dog would be capable of. Shelby says, uh, "Is there any advice uh, on socializing his dog?" It says, "With people, with other dogs, he gets overly excited." Um, Shelby's a good guy. So, uh, Shelby, are you meaning socialization with? Dogs, dogs, and people. So sometimes he'll take the dog out to, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna say mellow or harvest patio, mellow patio. You know, it can be a bit overwhelming to some dogs. You know, the, all the noise, the smells, right? Tons of strange people. Maybe another dog is in the building. Um. So this is the thing. If people, a lot of times people refer to socializing a dog meaning it's social with other dogs. All right, and my first rebuttal to that is dogs don't need friends, okay? They need you. Now, my definition of socializing a dog, uh, socializing a dog would be different environments, okay? Like you said, smells, noises, um, uh, basically things that they may come in contact with walking on expanded metal versus concrete or a, a slick gym floor or something like that. So socializing a dog around different smells, sounds, um, environmental changes and things of that nature, uh, loud noises especially, dogs freak out with loud noises. If you are having a dog that's having an issue with acting or being reactive towards other dogs, I would take a big step back and go back to the obedience and then maybe once your obedience with just you and the dog is, is tight then take the dog out around other dogs um, and then enforce the obedience. So in other words, like maybe not let the dog come in contact and direct contact with another dog, but maybe be working obedience around a dog park um, uh, or around some place that has other dogs or other people, but just enforce the obedience aspect. And what that's going to do is get the dog to understand, hey, I need to not pay so much attention to what's going on. I need to pay more attention to my owner, my handler, um, and just keep the team there versus having the dog try to interact with other dogs. So it's really crazy. Sorry, I should probably turn off the volume to that. 
But yeah, I would, um, Shelby, I wouldn't get so much into worried about socializing your dog with other dogs. Um, now, if you have a, a reactive dog that um, maybe, maybe just take a big step back and not put your dog in those situations until it's ready for it, you know, obviously. It's kind of like um, with, uh, with certain dogs, loud noises are a, a big thing, you know, so right. you would start with a loud noise off in the distance and then slowly get closer, whereas if, let's say, you took a dog or a puppy and just came upon it and smacked two pans together and it freaked the dog out, well, forever the dog is going to understand that that's a bad thing. It didn't like it, right. you tried to flee from it, so you'll never get that dog broken of loud noises. So essentially what I do with my puppies that I have at the house is I'll put them in a corral um, and then I'll, um, I'll be off in the distance banging two pans together or shooting a blank 22 or something like that just right. to run in the lawnmower by the kennels, you know, just getting them acclimated to those different sounds and that way they're not so freaked out when they experience them that makes sense. out in the um, out in the open and the, the big thing is with socializing a dog is do a ton of work in the I guess behind the scenes don't don't just think that you can take your dog right. you know you just get a new dog whether it's from the Humane Society or you buy it from a breeder um, and you just think you can take that dog out you know that's 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 really not the not the way to go We're at all. All kinds of questions. Okay, Cindy Strickland said, as a breeder, I'm always looking for professional, decent, ethical trainers. I feel Chris is one of the few I've found in this region. Um, hey guys, how do you combat uh, resource guarding? Cooper gets aggressive when I try to take something away that he isn't supposed to have. Otherwise, he is the sweetest dog, which I can attest that is a super sweet dog. Shelby says, great advice. And he also says his dog is a blue tick. Coonhound. Oh, yeah. So, the the thing with um, with different breeds, he has to. You have to understand what you have. Okay, it's like um, like your your blue tick coonhound. They are a prey driven dog. I mean, these dogs are used to hunt, right? right? So they're they're treeing raccoons. They're hunting raccoons. They have prey drive. So anything that moves whether it be a small dog or, I mean, he probably doesn't have as much reactive uh, nature around large moving objects, um, but has probably a ton of issues with like dogs his size or smaller um, because the, the prey drive kicks in. Yeah. And, and when prey drive kicks in, everything else kind of shuts down. Like when, when a protection dog gets in drive, um, you'll see later when we do a little mitt work with uh, Brandon here and, and Titus, um, you can easily call the dog off, but the dog has to be in the right state of mind. Right. Okay, That's the reason I brought him versus bringing uh, Gideon or uh, Uzi or, or Zach or other dogs that are really, really, um, they have like this little bit of a loose screw. Yeah. They just want you, man. Like they don't, Titus knows it's a game. Uh, he's a great protection dog, but at the same time, he's very, uh, very well um, adapted to different situations, and he keeps his composure. Um, a lot of times, if a dog comes out that has a lot of prey drive, and you mess around and you're at Pretoria Fields or you're out on a walk, and another dog comes zooming by, then that dog's going to go after it. You know, not maliciously, but it kicks in. It's like right. a like, natural thing. Instinctive. Kind it's of. a very instinctive thing. So um, Amy says, I can't wait for Chris to train Ollie. He needs uh, help bad. Does not listen to me, even if I have a pinch collar on. And Skip says, don't get your arms broke, Brandon. Great luck, my dude. You are braver than I am. Yeah. This, uh, luckily, this is a smaller dog. We tested it out earlier. Yeah. It's super sweet. And then I've kind of got, these are uh, slick floors, so I've got that to my advantage as well. Can't get so much traction to, to really tear into me yeah well uh another thing too we're we're coming from a, a very short range not a lot of right not a lot of space to to build up speed um go check out some of the videos that i have on the uh shelby's asking about me getting attacked yeah we're gonna put a mid on later and uh what's the dog's name again titus 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 is going to uh get at it um there was something else that kind of caught my eye i guess i missed it Maybe not, but um, but yeah, guys, definitely. If you have um, any tips on helping with a dog with separation anxiety, okay, man. 
separation anxiety is probably one of the worst things that you can deal with. Who's that, Chris? Yeah, Dinhead. Um, Dinhead. Let's get my dog's name's Titus. That's terrifying on its own. Um, Thanks again for the advice, Shelby said. Yeah, no, you're very welcome. Yeah, that's what we're here for, you know. Um, round table about. He's just a wealth of knowledge. Speaking know, of wealth know. of knowledge. Well, wealth. we're going to continue with it. You're going to go on to this separation anxiety. I'm yep. going to introduce this new beer. Okay. Yuki, it's Yukio. Yukio, and it's from Three Taverns, which is a great brewery. Um, and I think this is what, out of... I, I know it's Georgia. I'm thinking it's Athens, but I've drank so many... So it's Decatur. Sorry, I'm a piece of shit. So it's Decatur. Uh, Cindy Strickland. Oh, yeah, that's a big topic. Um, Decatur, and it says, To enter Yukio is to enter a floating world detached from the cares and concerns of life. This Japanese-inspired rice lager was created for such an experience. Light and crisp in character, the unique addition of jasmine tea introduces sweet floral notes and a flesh, uh, a flesh, mm. <laughs> a fresh, pleasurable finish. And the can is like super anime. Uh, it is <clears throat> some bearded man riding on a giant koi with it, it floating with lanterns, and, and I'll show you guys. It's until the flesh. Mishap. It was. He, he kind of sounded like you were on the prices, right? Like you could be that guy. I was that guy yeah. for two seconds until I fucked it up. Can we say that? Is this on? You can. Yeah, you can. You can say like we're. We're not. Uh, we're not monetized. We're not, we're not censored by the. I mean, man. We're not, we don't make money with this, so right. a lot of times Twitch doesn't really care if you don't make any money with it. I'm gonna kind of show you guys the can if y'all want to see it. Wow, that's not very well lit. Hmm. Might need to back it up. Here, I can adjust that. Does that help any? Not at all. Okay. But it's crazy how much this light helped. You know, us. It's kind of crazy how much shine there is on my, my head right here. No, man, it balances out. Look at that. Look at the balance on that. Um, funny story about that. I used to do extra work, like in movies. And like the, the rock and stuff? No. Okay. <laughs> no. Um, more like, like lower budget type stuff. You remember the. You probably don't remember. How old are you? I'm 36. Okay. Do you remember the show Your Mama? Mm -hmm. On Where there was just like mama jokes? That was a whole premise. There's another guy in town that was on Your Mama. Yeah. So I was one of the guys in the crowd that was going, ooh. Like it'd be the lamest Your Mama joke. But they, they wanted you to hype it up? Yeah. Even if it was just awful? Yeah. And so, but... Kind so, of kill some of the effect. Yeah, so the next day, that was on a Friday, the next day I f did a film with Tyler Perry. And I say that like it was me and Tyler Perry, like he was like He's asking famous. me to come. Uh, but no, it was just I was the casting people. So I was a guy in the back of a bar. Yeah, you can conserve your battery. We'll just use this. If you, your battery's um, dying. If you, um, if you go watch Why Did I Get Married with Janet Jackson... You're I'm, in there somewhere? I'm actually in that movie. Did and you I'm ever a, screenshot it, like you, where you're at? No, because it happened so fast. But this is the thing. The funny story about the shine on my head. I was literally in a booth with my date, okay, that was on the other side. And we were having fake conversation for like four hours while they were taping this one scene. And Tyler Perry, as you may know, acts and directs. So right. he does a scene, and then he goes behind the camera, he watches the scene. So the hours that this takes for this to go through, we're just sitting there, okay? Well, he looks behind the camera, he's watching it, he looks like this, behind the camera, looks like this. I'm obviously very easily picked out in yeah. this cast. So he's looking at me, and then he grabs this lady and tells her to go talk to me. He's like, hey, go over there. I feel like I'm about to get cut, right? No speaking part, no nothing. I'm getting like 100 bucks a day. I'm about to get cut. So I'm sitting there, this nice lady comes over. Hey, baby, how you doing? And I was like, I'm doing great. I'm about to start collecting my stuff. <laughs> she says, sit tight. And she pulls out her makeup bag, and she starts Aww. blotting my head. Yeah, the shine was serious. Apparently the shine was in full effect on that. It's uh, actually not bad on this. Yeah. Like, I'll big it for you. There it is. Look, you mm. have makeup on right now. No Nobody shine. can tell. No shine. We're good. Um, so I was, I was referring to anxiety, guys, not the beer. All right, Cindy. All right, Cindy. We hear it. <laughs> so, separation anxiety. All right, so check it out. This is 
if you have a dog, if you have a dog that you've had since it was eight weeks old, okay, typically eight weeks is when the breeder will allow for the dog to go. Most states actually uh, won't allow you to get a dog earlier than eight weeks. It's got to stay with the breeder for eight weeks. Uh, some states, it's not that big of a deal. I personally like to get my puppies at six because uh, the imprinting process is from six to 16 weeks. And imprinting, and we'll get into the anxiety here in just a second, but I know I'm just going to probably be all over the place. But when I throw out words like imprinting, people want to know what that means. Yeah. So essentially imprinting is making sure that we are associating or getting the dog um, acclimated to everything we want it to do in its, uh, in its older life, so to speak. But if you've had the dog since it's eight weeks old and it has separation anxiety, it's your fault. 100% your fault. Um, and that's hard for a lot of people to, to understand, and they, it's hard for them to hear, but it is 100% your fault because typically dogs with separation anxiety, why would a dog have separation anxiety? Because it is used to, like if I was just beside you all the time, like everywhere, I, everywhere you went, I went, right? You'd like that. It would be fun. But It was like that for a while, F. Yeah. But continue. Uh, and then when he would ask for days off, I'd be like, no. I never no, did because I gotta, I never asked for it. i got to have you here. So essentially, if the dog is used to being around you all the time, then as soon as you take the dog and you leave the dog, it freaks out. Because it basically you took its binky, right? Right. So typically with separation anxiety, um, it is something that, that we inflict on our own dogs by carrying it around all the time having in our lap all the time, constantly talking to the dog, constantly. And people are going to hear this and be like, man, that, you're such a dick. Like, of course I want to talk to my dog. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if you are basically making yourself the dog's world and the dog has no, um, never has had the opportunity to be independent from right. you, that makes sense. then it will always long for you. And separation anxiety, man, that's some crazy stuff. I've had dogs, I've got a dog at the house now that um, suffering from huge separation anxiety, uh, didn't eat for like a week, uh, mm -hmm. cries in the, you know, cries at nighttime and, and, and all that. And it's just something that you have to, um, you have to get, you have to power through that, yeah. you know, and it's, it's one of those things that I teach the first and foremost, I teach the place command. Place command is kind of what Titus is doing right now. He's just up on a box hanging out. He's by himself. He's totally independent of me. Right. Okay, And I'll teach that so I can get the dog away from me because I want the dog to be independent. Right. With that independence, starts to take away that separa separation anxiety. And, and a lot of times, man, it gets to a point where it's just detrimental. I mean, the dog will be in the crate. The dog will get out of the crate. It's all <clears throat> bloody. From you know the brow all the way down to the nose because they're just trying to get out to get. They're just miserable without yep. you because you you created this like serious attachment yep. and yep. they don't know how to cope without you. And it's different too, like if you get a dog out of a shelter and it starts to develop some sort of separation anxiety, it could be just the fact that we don't know where that dog came from. What you got? It's just there's a lot. But um, <laughs> but anyway, so the big thing is with separation anxiety, guys you can control that like teach the dog to get away from you let the dog have some alone time don't um don't coddle the dog don't um uh, don't don't pick up the dog and carry it around all the time don't talk to it all the time i mean and and i'm not saying that you can't have this dog as a companion for camaraderie and such but uh, if you are constantly doing that with the dog then you are enabling that dog to be right. or to have that separation anxiety and it it could get bad man like you could come home and your freaking sofa's ripped up just tore up know? yeah we have just i'm surprised at how many questions we were getting from people and what's up hunter hunter saying what's up um says my dog will not stop pissing on the kitchen i originally had a pee pad in the kitchen the first year of his life but now we are taking uh taking three times a day now that we are taking three times a day i still find him pissing in the same place and on the pee pad once was so he's peeing. So he's very smart. He's peeing where the pee pad was. Hmm. Uh, he can fetch a beer. But he can't get in gear with the rear. What's your take on socialized socialization period? So many people think it's okay. Let's do 16. one at a time. Yeah, fair. All We're right. Lots of questions. So let's talk about the pee pad. 
Guys, if you're using pee pads, stop that. Stop it now. You are essentially telling the dog it's okay to piss in the house. That's fair. I mean, hey. You're, you can pee in the house. Just pee in this little spot. Pee That's, right here. On this. On this. You take the pad away. They're like, I still have a pee spot. I used to piss I'm right here. I'm going to pee right, mm-hmm. pee right here. See, fine. So this, this is the thing. By you doing that, you are teaching the dog it's okay to use the bathroom in the house. Okay? We can agree. I hope we can agree with that. So... Your, if the pee pad goes away, essentially, you're, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to break that dog of doing that. The next thing the dog is going to do is go in your bathroom and pee on the rug because it mimics a pee pad. Okay? Yeah. There's nothing magical about a pee pad. Um, I mean, dogs will go to that area once you teach them to do that just as easy as a dog will go outside when you teach them to do that. So I would, man, that, that's, a, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. You're going to... What I would suggest doing is taking a huge step back and go back to potty training 101 and get yourself a crate. And this is the, excuse me, this is the, this is the way that you would want to potty train a dog essentially. The dog sleeps in the crate, okay? You get the dog up first thing in the morning, like don't do a whole lot of rustling around because once the dog knows you're up, it's mm-hmm. ready to go, juices start flowing right. amongst everything else. You immediately get up, you take the dog outside. You let the dog use the bathroom. If the dog only does one, the dog goes right back in the crate right. for 10 minutes or so, and you take the dog right back out. Okay. Keep in mind, in saying all this, if you remember what I talked about in the beginning where I said I feed the dog in the crate, so right. it enjoys the crate, it likes the crate, it takes mm-hmm. the crate on as its home right. so it doesn't want to mess it up. Take the dog out of the crate, take it back outside, let it do the other. Okay. If the dog does the other, then it has a little bit of freedom. Teach the dog that, hey, look, you do both outside, you get to come inside and play for a little while. All right? You don't do both, you got to go back in the crate. So, excuse me, um, the dog will essentially start to learn that it's got to do both outside and then it can come in to hang out. But what you're doing, man, um, was it a guy? Right, um, I'll scroll back up. It was. Um yeah, Dustin. Dustin. Face. So essentially, what what you've kind of done, Dustin, is is um, you know shot yourself in the foot with the pee pad thing. And I realize it's convenient, you know, but but it's going to be tough, man. I would I would say definitely take a huge step back and go back to crate training. Uh, sterilize that area big time. Go to Home Depot and get um, get something that you like some urine remover. So they don't uh, keep smelling and associate yeah. that with pee. Yeah, expect man. If it's carpet, oh man, you're gonna you're gonna have a tough time with that but do your best to uh, sanitize the area so it doesn't smell like pee so much all right um cindy asked a question earlier um says what's your take on social the socialization period so many people think it's up to 16 weeks i personally disagree um if my socialization period as um wonder if she's referring to like puppy imprinting um, you said earlier what uh, they won't let you get them before you said eight. Well, yeah, six. Like six. Um, you know, she probably does a ton of socialization when because she is a breeder, right? right? Um, and she probably does a ton of socialization right there before the dogs even go home. Right. Um, and essentially, she was um, the socialization period. I guess if you wanted to look at it like that, would never really end because you're constantly introducing a dog to new things. But um, but so I'm not really sure where the what the question would be as far as like the longevity or what that timeline looks like. But six the 16 week mark is kind of a, just a, a go to. This is where the dog is still you know forming and um, it's got you know it's, it's uh, creating its own thought process and things like that. And so that is a good good time to um, to get all of these new environments new sounds and things like that in there um, but again all of this is done at the safety of your in the safety of your own home or your yard don't go taking a puppy out in public um, until it has its fourth set of shots because you're essentially going to open that puppy up to risk of things like parvovirus coccidia stuff like that um, and all of that can be some pretty nasty stuff. Like yeah. I was, I happened to be at the brewery um, a few months ago, and this cute little um, English cocker was running around. Right. And you know, me being around dogs all the time, I knew that was a very, very young dog. And I walked out and asked the owner, "I was like, man, how old is that dog? He's cute. Oh, he's only ten weeks old." I was like, 
I was like, hey, I'm not trying to be that guy, but I'm going to be that guy. You need to pick that dog up. You know, go clean its paws real good, and then hold it while you're in here. If you, I said you shouldn't even have it here, but if you're going to have it here, don't let it run around on the ground because people don't understand if they're taking dogs out that young. Let's say hypothetically speaking, the dog is running around in the little yard. Right, Pretoria. Where okay, hundreds of dogs. Where hundreds around. of dogs have been, and this is not a knock on Pretoria whatsoever. But there are things that adult dogs carry that's transmitted through fecal matter. Okay, that puppies it can be very detrimental to puppies. Yeah. And let's say that puppy is running around and it's digging a little bit in the dirt where an older dog maybe defecated. Right, and it has. You know, it's a carrier for parvovirus. Right. Um, and then that puppy goes home, gets in the car, gets in the crate, licks his paws. Boom. Next thing you know, that dog has been exposed to parvovirus. And um, if you haven't ever dealt with parvovirus, man, it's Rough. it's bad. It'll it'll take a dog in a matter of a day or two if you don't get Rough. get help for it. She was saying exactly what I thought. Yeah. Exactly, that's what I thought. What do you think about this? Man, this is actually... Uh, this is solid. Like, I mean, not, not deterring, because we're, we're drinking beer, too, and we're talking about stuff, but this was Three Taverns. That was solid-ass beer. I like it. It's um, very light, very yeah, crisp. I dig it. I'm going to go into this one. I like Let's Sam Smith, and this is one of those that you probably want to get into kind of quick. Um, we're going to do that. I'm going to open it up. We're going to get a little man to, uh, to light me up on my arm. I think that'll be fine. I think you'd want to see that. Yeah, if you want, man, we'll go ahead and get um, we get Titus get him to wake up over here and um, maybe do a little point of view. Have you hold the camera? Yeah, man. Over the sleeve. And guys, um, I would like to say something about what what we're doing with uh, with Titus here tonight. Um, although Titus is a protection dog. What we're doing is fun for him. We're not teaching him to be aggressive. We're not teaching him to be mean. Um, we are, this is a game to him. Essentially, when I am building dogs from the ground up, we teach the dog that it's fun to bite, okay? And once the dog understands that, he makes a game out of it. Now that is part of the reward system. Uh, so essentially what Titus is doing, he's already sat up because he's heard his name a couple times. Um, but essentially, he, it's a reward for him. So it's not like, I mean, you'll, you'll even notice that once he does this, I'll put him back over there. Brandon can go over there and pet him. It's not an issue at all because he understands that this is a game. Okay, so uh, keep in mind that protection training, uh, is sport dogs, uh, if you watch any of the uh, IPO, French Ring, uh, PSA, Schutzen, all that stuff, I mean, it's part of sport okay and that's all this is uh, but there is a huge huge discretion and uh, difference between a sport dog and a true protection dog right I will say that because a sport dog is completely gear driven meaning once it sees that that sleeve come out or the guy put on the suit it knows it's time to play yeah whereas a protection dog he just wants your face man doesn't care noted I'm glad you brought this cute pup in today um, Dustin says, awesome, awesome shows. Thanks, Dustin. I don't know why I said Austin. Uh, Dustin, and thanks for the advice, Chris. Uh, Courtney says that she's just here to see me get, um, rocked by that pup. That's also a reward for me. She's, that's Courtney for you. Uh, do you compete in, uh, Schutzen? Schutzen. Schutzen. Um, I personally don't. I'm not, I'm not ridiculously big in the sport. Um, uh, I have a couple dogs that um, I'm going to take and get my BH or their BH essentially. Uh, there's different levels, um, like there's a PSA 1, PSA 2, PSA 3, things of that nature that we do um, we do tracking with. Right. There's an, a huge obedience aspect to it, and then there's also the protection aspect of it. And Courtney, personally, I don't compete. Um, what I'm actually going to start doing, though, because the pet training business has been so big for me, I've had to taper back just a little bit, meaning I don't have time, I did not have time to work my personal dogs as much as I would have liked or look, would like. And so therefore, you'll, you'll notice, um, well you, may, you won't notice because it's kind of behind the scenes, but I'm gonna be taking less and less dogs uh, as we're moving into the future because right now I'm typically running 
10 to 12, sometimes 15 pets a month that I'm training, and um, and that's a lot. You know, no, it's no kind doubt, of a, no doubt. Um, you know, so it's 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 easy enough for me to get everybody worked a few times a day, and everybody goes home happy. Right. But um, but you know, 12, 12, 15 pets on the property, that's a lot. And then when you have six or seven working dogs, such as myself, right, to maintain as well. Yeah, it's very difficult to uh, to do that. So to answer your question, I don't currently compete in Schutzen or. Uh, IPO, PSA, or anything like that, but I would like to get where I have the time to do that because it does take, it takes a lot, it takes a lot of time to to get to that position to where you can go and compete because um, if you know anything about Schutzen or IPO, PSA, there's just no clubs around here that do that. So actually on Sunday afternoons, we've started doing bite development, prey drive building, uh, obedience, so we could essentially take dogs and get them uh, get them their titles um, in those different sports, whether it be uh, three ring, French ring, Schutzen, IPO, PSA, stuff like that. So, uh, but currently I don't, I don't do that. This is a Courtney's story. asking about uh, this Yukio. You can't really see it too well. Um, it's super anime, wide angle lens. It's not really. Well, we're getting a lot of them over here. Schitzel CW. So if you tuck your shirt into your trousers, does it mean you're shirt is loose or your trousers are tucked into your shirt fair enough i want a gerbil uh do you train hamsters i need okay marky infiltration is mission with hamsters i think they made a movie about that my ex stole all me coke i need it back <laughs> this is just people throwing in random stuff so that is a three taverns beer yukio and it's actually it's a like a rice beer and it's super good yeah. um, i'm not really sure what marky would want to train the hamster for uh, I think, uh, what's his name? It's not like some Richard Gear. Richard Gear stuff. Is yeah, it? no, I think yeah. that's what it is. Like tunnel work. Yeah, I need you, I need you to burrow <laughs> in my Orpheus. In, into our Orpheus. Uh, yes. To our Orpheus. Yeah, so we're going to drink this real quick. Yep. Uh, or we're going to sip on it. Yeah, I'm going to change the quick. cameras a bit. Yep. This is from Samuel Smith. It's a product of England, and it is an organic handcrafted fruit ale with strawberry. Did we miss any questions? I'm sure we missed tons. It'll, it'll go for us like having no question for a minute, and then all of a sudden, four or five of them will pop up within a short period. All right, so I'm just going to, while he's changing cameras around and all that kind of good stuff, I want to see if I can't run back through the questions, but I don't think... Damn, that's good. That is pretty good. Have you tried it? I did. Holy shit. All right, I'm ready to get attacked. I just want to... <laughs> I just want to adjust this camera a bit. So we can make sure that is as optimal as possible. Okay. Yeah, Courtney says it's too dark to see the label. Technology, man. I know, man. I'm working something out with it. I'm trying something out. Not that they can probably actually hear me, but. All right. Here, you can adjust this if you need. Do you think that needs to be? This is what the camera is is right in front of you. Do you think it needs okay. to be adjusted any? All right. Where do you? Do you want it on you? Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Because okay. then we're gonna get the other angle. Yep. So if you're gonna be there, okay, guys. So essentially, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do some very, very short, very, very short sins. Okay. Now there's a couple, couple different things that you um, that were when you. When you're working with dogs, uh, there's drag-ins, which is essentially the dog is on a leash, and you're letting the dog pull you in, um, right. and you're building explosive power and things with the dogs, and they're coming up into you. Um, essentially, then there are sins, you know, where you would just um, yell whatever word for attack or bite or right. whatever, which what I use with uh, our dogs is Pakin, P-A-K-I-N. It's just a, basically German for attack. Okay. Use a lot of German phrases. Uh, not so much. I mean, I'm not a big, 
I'm really not a big fan of walking around saying foos and plats and seats and this kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's just, um, it's, it's a little much for me because yeah. it's not um, everyday lingo. Um, but at the same time, there is, I do understand why people do that. Um, but this is the thing. It, people, people like to, um, you can teach a dog that cheese pizza means lay down, right? Yeah. Uh, it's just essentially word association. Right. You know, when he says this, I do this, right? So teaching a dog, it's not like the dog has to be super smart to be bilingual, you know. Right. Um, but at the same time, people do have this false sense of if I teach the dog in a different language, then nobody else can control my dog. Well, this is the thing. If I send a dog mm -hmm. and he bites you, you can say out all you want. But he's not letting go. Right. Right. It's the same command. Um, but if I say out, he's like, oh, he understands. That's my guy. You know, I yeah. got to listen to him. So essentially, that's that's kind of where that's kind of where we're at with that. Courtney but, Courtney says that she's always looking for a new beer, the Twisted Timber. She's one of the owners of the Twisted Timber. I don't know if you've had the chance to. We've had we've done a show over there before. You know, throwing some axes around. But I don't know if you've ever had a chance to go over there. I personally hadn't, and I want to get over there. Um, I've heard that it's a lot of fun. Um, I've heard that uh, a lot of people have gone, and, and it's been it's great. It's something good for the Albany area for sure. Um, but I haven't had the opportunity to, to go. All right. So essentially, what's going to happen? This right here, guys, is just a sleeve. Okay. All it is is a is a basically a um, um, uh, a sleeve that's got some padding in there. So Brandon's not actually going to be getting getting bit here um, but you'll see the dog come in and, and latch on and hold and what we'll do the first time is essentially I'll out him okay right. so like when I send him um, he'll he'll buy it you know kind of just wrestle you know uh, wrestle with him just a little bit right um, because keep in mind we're doing this out of prey right so this is a living thing so boom he hits it you're shaking it a little bit you're you know doing your thing um, I'll out him he'll come back and get in, back in a heel position I'll send him again, and then this time you'll you'll play with him for just a second, and right. you'll slip it. And basically, slipping the sleeve is essentially just letting the dog have the sleeve, so therefore the dog wins, right? Right. If you teach the dog that he's he may win, you know, then obviously he wants to win. So right. eventually, what happens is we get the dog off the sleeve, we put him on a suit. Even though Titus is very efficient on suit, he does hidden sleeve work. Um, this is, he gets, he likes this. He knows that it's time to play when he sees this, um, but he's definitely not afraid to actually live bite. But right. we have him, when he sees this, he knows that I'm gonna target right here. Right. Typically, um, in protection sports, you'll see that the dog, you'll, you'll see that this is where the dog usually hits. Um, in apprehension work, it really doesn't matter, but we want a good bite on the bicep. And of course now, Brandon's bicep, as large as it is, is in this shirt, is a little exposed. We don't want to send Titus there. If you were to open your arm up like this, or be like this, then yeah. he's coming in. Okay. Right. So we want to keep you protected and keep keep this here. So for all case in point um, uh, purpose that we're using now, this is more of a protection sport type type hit. Right. So, and like I said, with the with the slick floor, uh, it's not going to be like he's jamming up in you. But do remember, and I'm going to post a video on this. I, I saw somebody. Not a local trainer because right. I'm not into, you know, bashing uh, people around this area, and I'm not going to be bashing this individual. But you have to be super careful when you're doing this with your dogs, not to jam them. You know, and right. we talked about this earlier. So when the dog comes up, you don't need to stiffen up and push into him. Right. You know, almost need to kind of be Gumby like. Right. So the dog hits it, and then he's there's it. It doesn't make a, a unpleasurable experience for the right. dog. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So. You're going to do cool. the point of view? Yeah, I'm going to swap over.
Sit. Let's see if you can catch this. So what you want is a good calm. You see how he's calm. He's not aggressive with right. it. He's not, he's not, uh, not growling, not barking. He's very calm. So now I'm going to give it to him. Yes. Out. Down. Off the suit. Yeah. You want to put the suit on? No. <laughs> All right, buddy. Here, place. Now right, we're gonna put this back. What we'll do, guys? We'll have. Uh, I'm gonna invite Brandon out on a Sunday, and Excuse we'll uh, put him in the full suit. No sound. What happened to the sound? Oh, it's probably this right here wasn't really picking it up too. Oh, what? I'm a dumbass. We can do all of that over again. Okay, that's fine. I'm okay with getting attacked. So, so what happened is that I put. Um, So whenever I, I created the new camera, right, mm -hmm. the new scene for us to have both this camera and the camera, other camera, you have to add the microphone as well. Mm -hmm. I'm so used to it being on all of them that whenever I created the new one, I forgot to add the microphone. Boo. So they could see us. Yeah. Okay, so basically what we want, what I was telling them, if you want to stand up again. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get tore into again for those that... uh. Can you guys, so when I swap over to this camera, let me know if you can hear me okay. This should be camera eight. Can you guys hear me okay? Let's go back to camera eight. Yeti has been added, make sure my audio is good. Audio is good. Yeah, that was a mishap on my yeah, side. Yeah, no problem. All right, so <laughs> Sorry, you guys. So essentially, I, and I don't know when we, when we. So that when it, right when I swap over, it okay. it, it went out. That yeah. was that was my goof. That's all right. So essentially, what we um, what we were talking about, guys, is there's a huge difference between uh, protection sports and actual protection work. Now this this is just a sleeve. Um, and basically, what it does, it, it pads the arm, okay, right. to to help in this. Um, this little bite bar here where it kind of slopes in, uh, kind of contours to the dog's mouth. So we, the, it teaches the dog that we want a good full full bite on the uh, on the sleeve itself. So essentially, if if we were doing apprehension, then we would want to go for either the top of the arm on the tricep, right. or we would let the dog come in here uh, because this will take your soul. Right. I don't know if you've ever, if those of you ever, yeah, something. man, it'll, it'll, I've seen like soul. power lifting where you see the guy's bicep and all of a sudden you see it go whoop. Yep. So, I mean, if it, your dog gets you here, you're done. Okay. So, if you were teaching protection, like true protection work, yeah. this is not or apprehension work. This is not the target area right. that I would suggest. But for um, for what we're doing with Titus and for tonight in this kind of closed environment, this is definitely the safest safest place for Brandon to catch uh, catch the dog. So oh, He's excited. So, he gets to, gets to play again. So essentially, are you going to get your camera? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. All right, buddy. All right, heel. I keep hitting this Bixby button. For anybody who has Android, Bixby is the devil. Oh, okay, I'm looking. Look at the focus. Watch you. Watch you. You ready? Yeah. Watch you. Back. Oh, yes. 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 Right. So we're looking for a good calm, calm bite. Nothing crazy. Yes. 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 Yes.
So this time what we're going to do, you're going to fight with it a little bit, um, hold it though, and I'll take the camera and show how deep he's in there, Right. Um, and then you'll just slip it, I'll give you the camera back, and then right. you can slip it, let him tussle with it for a second, I'll out him so we don't knock everything so over. So this little tripod is not super uh, Gotcha, so tight. I'll grab up top. Yeah. Okay. Alright, ready? Watch. Watch. Yes. Watch. Okay. So essentially, this is what we're looking at, guys. We want to make sure that we have a good, deep, calm bite. Yes. 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 So can you imagine if that was your arm? I know, right? All right, slip it. <laughs> uh, I will try. I will try. Yes. What you got, buddy? What you got, buddy? What you got? Yes. All right, out. Place. Nope. Place. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. He's a miss. He's a good boy. Yes. Nice. But yeah, so the, the difference between a sport dog and a true protection dog, um, protection dogs usually we, protection and apprehension dogs, we usually don't try to target on the, the forearm like that because right. it's, it's typically not... It's typically not going to be the the best place for the dog to grab onto. Like if I, if you and I were wrestling and I was grabbing you here, yeah, it's not very effective. No, it's not very effective. So uh, we want to teach the dog to really get up, get up in there. <laughs> get get up in that just bicep. Get up, just get up in that bicep. Or that tricep, right? You get in that meaty, them biscuits. You get right in them biscuits. And it'll it'll take your soul, man. It'll take your soul. But yeah, so essentially one day, guys, we're gonna let Brandon come out to the house when we're doing. Uh, we're doing bite work. Yeah, I just changed the camera altogether. Okay. I'm, I'm back to this one. Okay, good. So, um, and look at this guy. So get that. Get that off me. Uh, Rob Wilson, how does a dog uh, transition from a sleeve to a real life situation where there's no sleeve? Good how question. Do you, how do you prepare for that? Good question. All right. Um, so what was the, the what was it again? No, no nerves. She was worried that I, I was nervous or something. No. Uh, it says, how do you transition a dog from from the sleeve to a real life situation? Yeah, so, okay, so there's a, there's a, a everything is a segue, right? What is, what do we got going on over there? Oh, Which yeah. <clears throat> I can swap back. Okay. So, um, everything is a segue to what we're, uh, and, and whether this, this is the one that we're currently on, and that's the one that I can swap to. Oh, okay, got you. So, as far as getting the dog off of gear altogether, um, it would go in stages. And his name is Rob, Robert. Um, yeah, Robert Wilson, good guy. Yeah, it would go in stages. So first, you would, if you had a puppy, you would get him on like a towel or a toy, you know, a, a tug. Or I like to go to Tractor Supply and buy these little squirrels that have the squeakers in them and I cut the squeakers out um, and then we get the puppy on that and from there you'll go to let's see if I got some stuff here so from after the the dog has been on a towel or something like that we'll go to what we call just a puppy sleeve okay this is a very very soft very small sleeve that will will work the puppy and let the puppy get a bite right in here and we'll play tug with him. Uh, essentially then we'll move up uh, to a little bit bigger sleeve, uh, more intermediate, and then of course um, they range up in the sleeves that we use for protection sports is, is um, more of a, a harder jute sleeve. These are jutes as well, but they're just a little bit softer, but it's a harder sleeve. And from there we'll go to the suit. Okay, and essentially the suit, Adjust that again. 
I'll let you keep talking. I'm going to adjust it. All right. So the suit essentially looks like this. All right. And basically, it's the same material. There you go. Vanna White. Vanna. Brandon White. Brandon White. Um, uh, it's the same material um, as, the, um, as the sleeves. And essentially, the dog is taught to go at the suit, right? So once it gets comfortable with the suit, then we go to hidden sleeves. And hidden sleeves is basically just a guy like Brandon, the decoy, the helper, if you will, has a hidden sleeve on. It's very thin, uh, just with like a sweatshirt over the top. So the dog starts to understand that we are going after flesh, okay? We're going after people, not gear, okay? And once you get to that point, then obviously we're not trying to find people that are silly enough to just go take live bites just to see if the dog will bite, but, um, but obviously the gear starts to go away, gets smaller, gets hidden, right. uh, and therefore the dog gets pretty confident in biting someone. Uh, versus the year because there are dogs like protection uh, like sport dogs it's all about the gear okay and there's a lot of people out there with some really good sport dogs that aren't gonna that aren't gonna know what to do there was a video matter of fact um, a couple months back where a naked guy was running down the road and the police officer got the canine out of the car sent the canine at the dog, or sent the canine at the uh, the alleged perpetrator or right. whatever, but he was naked, the dog had no idea what to do. <laughs> I would have done the same thing. I mean, I'm thing. not going to find somebody with their dick out either, yeah, but... I'm, I'm the same uh, way. But essentially, the dog had no idea what it's to like, do. It's like getting ready to fight somebody, and they just take off all their clothes, and you're like, I I don't know how to handle this. You win by default. Yeah, like, I'm not fighting you with your Peter out, man. But, uh, but no, that's a great question, because there are a lot... Um, um, there are a lot of people out there that teach their dog and get them hooked on gear, which you have to for the safety of everyone involved, but you need to quickly get them off of that and understand. All right, so perfect. So Hunter asks, why the calm bite? Um, if you've ever done jujitsu or grappling, right? Okay, um, you have to stay as calm as possible because. If you're in a position where if you have someone in guard or you have um, you know, a choke or you're trying to get somebody in an arm bar, if you, get, if you continue to stay worked up and you're tense the entire time, then you're just burning energy, you're right. burning energy. Same thing with the dog. We want the dog to latch on and stay calm because we don't know what, what fight he's going to be in for, or he doesn't know what fight he's, he's going to be in for. It allows him to conserve his energy. allows him to conserve energy, exactly. So that's the reason we, um, we want to get the dog to understand, look, you latch on, you stay calm and relax, and you just hold, okay? Um, and the reason we do that is because if the dog gets worked up and it's continuing to, you know, just bite, you can get away from a dog if, um, if, he's, if he has a shallow bite, like if it's just the canines right. and hits you. It's gonna hurt, but you can get away from that, you know. But if he's got that deep, full, calm bite, and he's yeah. just holding on to you, uh, you can run if you want. But I mean, the dog's gonna have to go with you. So that's um, I'm that's the reason we do that. In the camera. This is really, I mean, hands down, the most beer that I have. Drank on a Monday night. I'm not saying a lot. Monday night's the, the night you do it, man. You don't Monday do it night on is, Saturday. No, Monday night is not the night. Let me tell you a funny story. You guys in for a funny story? So there's a um, well, some sweet things. I wanted to, uh, wanted a Malawa. What that is? It's hard for me to read. Since I worked at a plantation, one of the other trainers had one. It's incredible, but it's, uh. Just waiting to get in the right stage of life where I can fit in the time. Yeah, and then man, that's super smart because um, people are just buying. He's smart, man. He just gets out of the camera every time. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> no, no, you're not, you're not looking at me anymore. So this is the thing. People, thanks to John Wick, the movie Max or whatever it was, everybody wants Malawas. The, they're YouTube sensations. They climb walls and do all this crazy stuff, jumping up through trees and everything else. Everybody wants one because of the things that they can do. But the thing is, 
you get one of these dogs, and if you do not train them properly, if you do not know how to handle them, if you don't, if you're not like Robert said in the right stage of life to where you can handle this, they are the most aggravating dogs on the planet. I got one at the house now. Um, his name is Uzi. Uzi is about two years old. High, high drive. I couldn't bring him in here, okay? Because um, he just wants, like, he wants the smoke and he wants every bit of it, man. Uh, it's such an amazing, amazing athletic animal. Um, but this fool, I got 10 acres out where I live, uh, deer everywhere. I don't know where he found, found this, but he is, I look up, I let him out. I'm cleaning kennels. He's just running around doing his thing. I see him shoot through the front yard with a deer leg, <laughs> like an entire leg. It's like still, no, it's yeah, still hooving. An entire hoof, fur, everything, deer leg. I can't get this thing from him. Like he's like, nah, bro, it's my leg. I, I worked for this, and so I spent the next thirty minutes trying to get like he. I mean, no f's. Like he had no. Uh, no way to correct so being the trainer I am I'm not gonna just yell him to stop or drop it or anything right. like that. I just trying to get him to come to me no way man he was like this is my dear leg so for thir I wasted 30 minutes of my day um, basically uh, um, trying to chase this thing down but anyway back to the funny story and and drinking on a random Monday, Monday. night there's this little Mexican restaurant over on the east side of town. It's called El Patron. El Patron. 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 The guy's mm -hmm. name's Marco. Um, don't go because I like it so much and I don't want you taking my seat. It's yeah, pretty yeah. small. He's got his own spot. He doesn't yeah, want you taking it. It's actually terrible. But anyway, I went to go and we decided that we were going to go have dinner. Uh, long story short, I had a little break between the time that... I had visitors come. Visitors usually come from 12 to 3 on Sundays. Uh, I had a, uh, an appointment with someone to build a service dog, uh, which I know you wanted to get into that. Yeah. Uh, build a service dog. And then at 7, some people were going to come from out of town to see their Great Dane. Mm -hmm. So we had a great idea. We're going to go grab dinner. Well, we go to El Patron. Uh, Marco's in there. Marco brings us two margaritas. No big deal. Marco's starting off right. I can handle a margarita. Not a problem. So we get our margaritas. Um, I drink mine. Shay drinks hers. Um, we have dinner. He asks us if we want one more. I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, we'll get one more. Um, so long story short, he brings one for me, one for her. We're drinking. She's like, ah, I don't want the rest of mine. So I finish hers. So I finish my two margaritas and the other half of hers. Well, and I'm not a light drunk. Okay. It takes a bit for you? It takes a little bit. Not right. for me. I'm so, well, we start to head home, and I'm like, man, I am, I'm drunk. Like, I am drunk. And here it is. It's 6 o'clock. I've got a meeting at 7 to visit their dog. I'm like, man, I'm going to go in and lay down for just a few minutes. Yeah. I lay down in the bed at 6 o'clock. Five minutes later, it's 6.55. I don't know where, <laughs> I don't know where the time went. Five minutes later, it's 6 o'clock. I get up, I go back out. Uh, you know, you know how when you're a little, when you're intoxicated, you feel like you're doing everything right. Yeah. You, nobody can tell no, I'm, I'm drunk. Totally good. No, yeah. I'm good. Nobody good. can tell I'm drunk. Meanwhile, you know, you're over there peeing in the bushes or something in your front yard when people pull up. Uh, that really didn't happen. But I can tell you that things did not go well with the session. The dog was just all over the place. Super excited to see the owners. Um, I'm, I'm. This is like the PG version of this story it could it was really it was really good but long story short we go back the next week and I'm like yo man I can't do this again you can't do me any more margaritas because I got to go back and work some this fool was back behind the counter putting extra shots oh. in the margarita yeah he was basically doing me up with extra shots like, no of, I got you yeah right, right. with tequila you. um and so that was definitely uh Definitely not. And Marco, man. Marco, man. And then, a, I mean, if, you're, if your goal is to get drunk, Marco got you. Yeah, go holler at uh, Marco. How long have you been training dogs? Um, Hunter, I have been training dogs for the last 
25 years. What actually I got you into it? I, I was going to ask this earlier. Like, what, what got you from the transition to the CrossFit into being the accomplished dog trainer that you are now? Um, well, essentially, the um, dog training was not even in on the spectrum. I didn't know what I was going to do. It came out of the came out of the wet works for me. Yeah. I was um, like, what? Yeah. He's, he's, he's like, really good? Like, where did where did this come from? Like, yeah. I didn't understand it. Like, they're like, yeah, he's like the guy. If you're going to get your dog trained, he's the guy to go to. And I was like, but he's, he's if you want to get fit, if you want to go to CrossFit, he's the guy to go. How or if you want to drink beer on a Monday night. Marco. <laughs> go see Marco. Go see Marco. Um, so, essentially, how I got into the dog training business, kind of a funny story. I was at Lowe's one day. All right, so I sold my gym. I didn't know what I was going to do. I interviewed with a couple like wellness companies and stuff like that. But once you own your own business, it's going to be so hard for you to go back and work for somebody else. Oh, yeah, no doubt. So I really didn't know how what I was going to do. Um, so I was at, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a couple weeks off. I'm going to work on the house. I'm going to do you know. So I was at Lowe's like every day. I, I was taking. I took cash with me. He's my big Rottweiler. Oh, okay. I um, thought you meant like just a big wad of cash. Yeah, just rolling. Exactly. At this Rubber point, man. I have no job. But um, but so I just sold the gym, and so I'm at Lowe's with my dog Cash. Cash is a Rottweiler. If you go on the Instagram or Facebook pages, you can um, you can see that uh, see Cash on there. If you guys want to see it, it's down over there. Yeah, right, right yeah, there. Yeah, right here. Yeah. Point at it again. Right there. Right over there. Yep. Yeah, that's it. In this general vicinity. Revolutionary canine. Um. So this guy was just following me around. And, you know, after about the third aisle, I started to pick up on the fact that every aisle I was on, this guy was on. Um, so, long story short, um, finally about the fifth aisle that I was on, I just kind of look at him and go, hey man, do we, we must have the same list. Because uh, every time I turn around, you're in my back pocket. And uh, he's like, no man, to be honest with you, I just, I've never seen a Rottweiler out in public, off leash, acting the way he acted, and I'm just acting the way he acts. and. And I just wanted to watch him a little bit. And I said, oh, okay, cool. He's like, um, can I ask you who trained him? And I said, well, I trained him. He said, really? You're a dog trainer? And I said, no, I just trained my, train my dog. And he was like, man, will you train my dog? And I was like, I got nothing better to do. I'm retired, right? Run it. Oh, I'll train your dog. So, you know, the guy gives me some money in the parking lot. He brings his dog the next day. And um, I keep it for a couple weeks. He takes it home. He loves the results, he tells Three or four people, they come, they like. So it was like a accidental business. It really was something I fell into, and it was kind of one of those things. It's like, man, I need some insurance. I need to figure out a name, maybe. I need to do an LLC with the state. That's awesome, man. Here we are, you know. So uh, it really, um, it's really, it's been a fun. It's definitely been a fun ride for sure. Yeah. Uh, to say the to say the least. But I, w- I was going to ask you this earlier um, about, like service animals and like protocol and I don't know like what are you looking I'm just looking oh yeah so somebody with a service animal whether it's for epilepsy or whether it's a dog for protection or they have anxiety or whatever uh, you you deal with this pretty often so I was gonna hear it from somebody who's Mm -hmm. kind of like a professional in the business you know so you see a lady there and she's got her dog, her service animal, and it's got a, a vest on or whatever it says, don't pet me, things like that. Like, okay. How many people are watching right now? Oh. Say? So on. I was trying to move this around. I, I had it on my phone. And the reason I, I, I want to know is because basically everybody that's watching, I want you to go and tell like four different people, four other people what I'm going to say. I mean, there's there's not as many through Twitch as I would like. Twitch is kind of a hard one to get through. Yeah. There's only three on Twitch, but no, that's fine. on Facebook, last I checked, there was, I mean, there's nine currently, but the people pop in and out. I mean, we yeah. had like almost 30 people at one time popping in and out. Yeah. So let's talk about, let's talk about service dogs real quick. Um, It's kind of a touchy subject because people will call me all the time and ask if I can make their dog a service dog or they'll say they need a service dog. And this is where it gets real, real crazy. 
Yeah, because I, I don't know a lot about this. That's why I was asking these questions. Yeah, so the definition of a service dog is, and, and the reason I was asking about how many people watch them because I would like everybody that hears this to 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 understand what I'm saying and go tell people because yeah. the biggest the biggest issues that we're having, and I say we, I don't I don't personally need a service dog. Um, but that's not necessarily for anybody else to tell me that I don't need a service dog right. because a lot of disabilities are not seen physically, right? right? You might have some stuff going on and you need a service dog and I can look at you like, no, he's totally fine. Yeah. You know, um, but, um, but that's not for me to say, right? That's where HIPAA comes in, you know, right. and, and all that kind of stuff. And the, the uh, uh, Americans with Disabilities Act. Hunter. Continue. Hmm? I'm saying by this, my saying by okay. Hunter. Um, so essentially, what we're um, what we're talking about here is a service dog is a dog that provides a service for one person. Right. Okay. Now, an emotional support dog is okay. a dog that just provides you with uh, companionship. Maybe you need something around for you to focus on. Okay. That would be your emotional support dog. Now, this is where it gets real gray. Uh, and you have therapy dogs in there, which basically therapy are like uh, like your paws patrol, uh, your dogs that go into hospitals and let people pet them and so they feel better and all that kind of good stuff. Right. But um, but essentially, your service dog has to perform a service. Okay. Now this is again where it gets gets very gray because people are having these emotional support dogs, and they're trying to call them service dogs because service dogs have different rights. Than emotional support dogs, right. right? If you let's say I'm a privately owned business, and you come in with your emotional support dog, they don't follow the same rules as the service dog. Right. If I have a business, you come in with a service dog, I can tell you that you have to leave with the dog. At this point, you can say, well, this is a service dog under the ADA. I'm protected. I can come in here with a service dog. Well, because it's privately owned, I own it, I can say, no, you gotta get out. Well, at this point, you have a decision to make. You can either press charges on me, file a complaint, or right. you can just leave, right? And say, well, you're not gonna get my patronage. Um, so essentially, the, um, the big thing with that is, if it is indeed a true service dog, I am gonna be found guilty every single time. Right. right for for kicking you out of my establishment, but if we find out this not a true service dog, then you are going to be found guilty, and that's up to like a thousand dollar fine with like six months in jail. Okay, so this is the thing with service dogs, guys. Now you can there is a let's say you have anxiety right. or you have PTSD, you know, because those are real things, right? Right. But if the dog does not perform a service. It's going to be classified. It's got to be classified as an emotional support animal. Right. Let's say I have anxiety, and when I and I go through panic attacks. Well, let's say I train my dog to when I'm having a panic attack, it lays on my chest right. to calm me down. That's a service. That's a service dog. Right. But let's say I don't like large crowds. You know, I mean, let's say I'm, I'm weird in large crowds, so I have my dog with me to keep me company. It doesn't really provide a service. It's emotional just there. Support. Yeah, it's just there for emotional support. So that's where you really have to um, ask yourself and be honest with yourself: Is this really a service dog, or is this just an emotional support animal, or is it just a good dog that I like to have with me? Um, because people are really taking advantage of the service dog industry and that title, and not having a true service dog. Right, and they're causing problems where there actually isn't problems, or they're making they're putting kind of a stain on making an issue where there actually is an issue. So, yeah, and people who actually have these needs, mm -hmm. who actually need the dog, and it's causing problems for them, or could. Yeah, well, essentially, essentially, what um, what happens is you have these dogs that let's say take Titus for example. Well, I think we both can agree he's very well behaved. Right. He can go. Uh, I haven't had him on leash unless we're doing bite work at home on Sundays. He's never been on. He's never on a leash. He's totally off leash. I can take him in any store I want to, right? Because he's gonna be. He's that good. But I'm not gonna label him a service dog because that's just not right. Right. All right I don't need him as a service dog. 
Now, I may down the road, and then at that point, I'll have to teach him a skill, a service to perform for me, right? right? But if I can't prove in a court of law that the dog provides a service, then then I'm going to lose every single time. Does that make sense? No, no, I get it. Um, because people are just making their household pets into service dogs. And I've had the opportunity to build some service dogs for people, and it's it's a very rewarding experience because you're giving someone an even quality of life as you and I. Right. Let's say you have someone in a wheelchair and you train the dog to go pick up articles for them. You know, pick up their phone, pick up their medication, pick up uh, the TV remote, pick up things that they drop because they can't physically do it. Right. You are in essence creating a better quality of life or just an even keel quality of life for someone that is kind of set back because of a disability. Right. And, and the thing is, you never, it's not my place to say you really don't have a disability. It's not your place or the store's place or anybody like that. Um, it's really up to the people to be super honest with themselves and like do some soul searching and say, do I really need a service dog? What does this dog provide for me besides emotional support? Right. Um, because it, it, it gets to the point to where, I mean, I've been in the airport before and you, you have a chihuahua that they're labeling a service animal and the mm-hmm. chihuahua basically just is hand, you know, held in the lady's hand the entire time. It's not for me to say that's not a service dog, but I'm just going to err on the side of it's probably not. Like, I'm not yeah. sure what service it would, you know, really qualify for. But again, because of the ADA, it's not for me to say. But right. I do, I do tell people all the time because they do call me quite a bit wanting to make their dog a service dog. And that's just, it's, it's, it's virtually impossible to make a dog that's already. Um, a couple years old into a service dog unless it has had some prior retrieval training or you can get it on uh, odor like if it indicates seizures coming on yeah. or it indicates low blood sugar things of that nature um, I mean there there are service dogs out there that do provide services but there are also twice as many people with dogs that are just good dogs. They're just pawning them off as service dogs for emotional support. They're putting a patch on them and saying, hey, this is my service dog. And and because we have become a society of don't ruffle feathers because people get butt hurt and they, they go overboard with this kind of stuff, that we just don't say anything anymore. Right. You know, um, and that's, that's the big thing. Um, yeah, well, actually, I think it's going to be on his Facebook page. Yeah, yeah. Be it, later. It, I can save this. I can make copies of it. It, it posts to my Facebook, and you can share it from there, and then you'll have it. Facebook uh, Live, it, the videos never go anywhere. We've been doing this for almost a year, and all these videos are still there. Um, on a another note, you know, I saw, like, a, I guess it would be a service dog. Um, I think when I was coming back from... I think I was coming back from Europe, and it looked basically like a massive pit bull, but it was just huge. The head was, I don't know what breed was, Mm -hmm. but the lady had like crazy anxiety, like on the plane, like as she was, like, so it took up a whole seat. It was massive. Right. But as the plane started to go up, she started like, you know, rocking back and forth, and she started getting all, you know, it obviously affected her a lot, and then it put its head on her lap, and she rubbed it, and then she was good for the rest of the flight, and then when it got ready to go down, the same thing happened. But it took up, it was massive. It just yeah. took up a whole seat. Yeah, so typically there are supposed to be guidelines to dog sizes. Um, you know, they, they're they really supposed to be able to, like on an airplane for that matter, they shouldn't have to be in a seat. Yeah. You know, they should be um, able to just kind of sit right there in front of your seat, out right. of the aisle. Um, so a dog like, like Titus would be the perfect size because he's a little bit smaller. Yeah, this dog was um, but, you know, again, it's not for us to say, you know, what's a service dog and what's not, but uh, people definitely do take advantage yeah. of that a lot. And um, it's just something that you can you can go online and register your dog as a service dog for free, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to urge you to be very careful when doing that because um, if you get... I mean, the penalties. Like you said, just be honest with yourself. Do you, is this dog actually perform a service? Is this dog? Do you, do you need this dog to have 
like what you said, just like a level playing field. Yeah. Like you need this dog, whether it's for like severe anxiety or yeah. like seizures or, you know, epilepsy, anything like that. Or is this dog just an emotional support dog? Uh, so I know that you can, uh, I know it could be done, but how do you train a dog to sense seizures? Uh, that's something that you can't control. Okay, so essentially, Robert, your dog, I'm sorry, not your dog, your body. When your body goes into any kind of trauma, it puts out an odor. Okay, so essentially what you're doing is you're training the dog to indicate on an odor. It's right. nothing more than, um, like let's say Titus was on cocaine, heroin, and ecstasy. Okay, not that he's on them, but he's on them, meaning he can indicate, yeah. he can smell those things and he'll indicate on them. He's been trained to indicate on that odor of cocaine, right? right? So essentially, these dogs are trained to indicate on the odor that your body puts off when you are about to have a seizure. Because right. whether you can smell it, and a lot of people that have, um, have seizures, uh, they have epilepsy, um, they can taste, their mouth taste different. Right. Like they start salivating a little bit differently. Um, kind of like I'm, my mouth's getting dry because we haven't had a beer in a while. I was but, on the um, same page. I was on the same um, page. But essentially your body will produce an odor. And what we have to do is get the dog on that specific odor. But a lot of it, to be totally honest, is going to be the bond that the dog has with the owner. The dog can obviously tell that you're in distress. And then it will start doing things naturally to, to indicate. Um, so, in other words, if you had somebody that um, uh, that was able to reward the dog for being close to this certain individual um, when they were having a seizure, then the dog would obviously continue to, um, to be next to that person or act a certain way when a seizure was coming on. And it's, and it's, an, it's a really an amazing thing. Um, so there's a couple different ways you can do it. One, if let's say Brandon here, we were going to build him a dog to indicate on seizures, we could get that dog on odor like birch oil or something like that and have him indicating on that. Um, and then essentially what we could do is somebody's near you when you have a seizure, we do a mouth swab. Yeah. Okay. And then we can actually transfer that over to the dog starts to indicate on what you smell like wow. or what your mouth uh, smells like when you're starting to have a seizure, when you're getting ready to have a seizure, or during that seizure, and then essentially when it smells that come on, it's going to indicate, right? Yeah. And then you constantly reward when that happens. So um, it's it's not as difficult as a lot of people try to make it out to be, but it's not super simple either. I hope that. No, that's awesome. I, that's something that I didn't know. It's called uh, Bama Mosa, and of course it's from Alabama, Gaz Gazden. Oh. No? It tastes like a mimosa. It tastes like there's some... It's 7%. It tastes like there's some champagne in there. It's got, it's got something. So this is Back 40, which anything Back 40's put out, I've pretty much liked it. Except for this. You didn't like it? It's okay. I mean, I'm not going to... Again, I don't discriminate when it comes to... It's made with orange juice. It's a brood, but maybe made with orange juice. Maybe that's what it is. It smells like it. Mm -hmm. it smells like it's... Like, like this would be great for breakfast if you were one of those guys who drink a lot of alcohol in the well, morning. Couple more. Well, it is breakfast. It's twelve oh one. Jeez. These things, they kind of, you know, I never really worry about the hour. I just kind of do it, and yeah. yeah. Well, here we are at midnight. Yeah, we still have two beers left. We don't have to necessarily drink these. I can always work them for another episode. We had a Westbrook uh, Goza, sour, salty, delicious, and there's a Brooklyn Rose Deville. Brooklyn. It's a raspberry sour ale. Seasonal. I grabbed it because it's, you know, seasonal. Seasonal. It's a Brooklyn Brewery. There are 111 comments on this thing. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people popping in. And thanks, guys, for popping in and asking these questions. I learned a lot of stuff today, honestly. What else do you want to talk about? What would the seven people still watching like? <laughs> the seven people. Ask away, guys. Us to talk about. Seven there. I mean, we're, we're already in this, man. We've got five on Twitch. You Twitch viewers, if y'all have any questions, I mean, you've got an accomplished dog trainer here. You've got a guy who is, you know, if you want to, even if you want to know about working out, man, 
This would be the guy. <laughs> this would be the guy to talk to. <laughs> like, how long ago did you create the CrossFit gym? How long ago was that? Two thousand eight. I was feeling like it was. Yeah. Holy shit. That was a long time ago, man. Hmm. Yeah. I, for some reason I was feeling like it was like fifteen years ago, but that still was a long ass time ago. Yeah. Um. So if you need to know anything about working out, man, man you want to get a good pump, and you want to ask him a question, you want to ask about, you know, human growth hormones or something. I don't know. Like uh, that's not. You want to ask about Harry, uh, Barry Bonds' head size and how it grew two <laughs> sizes as an adult. You know, you can ask these questions. Chris, what happened to the uh, class in January? I missed the call. Hmm. Class in January. Um, I don't think we actually had a class in January. There I think go. we. Um, um, we've had a couple puppy classes since then, but, um, but nothing that we had going on in January, but we do have, well, I say we well, I do have, but, um, here in the next probably month or so, we're going to have some stuff going on. Definitely would like you coming and checking it out and seeing, seeing everything that we do. Um, and I think that, I think what you got going on there is, is, uh, is great with uh with what you got and actually there's a, a pup at least one of your your dogs on the property right now that's there working so but yeah definitely um definitely got one coming up here in the next uh probably month that we'll have um we'll make an announcement or whatever but um but yeah i think the one in january got jacked up because i had a decoy had a decoy seminar that i was going to down in florida um, I'm constantly trying to expand my own knowledge. And that's the big thing about what, how I am is if I'm going to dig ditches, I want to know as much as I can about digging ditches. So I'll go take ditch digging classes. So 101. Yep, ditch digging 101. So, but typically, I mean, with this, I have had the opportunity to go back to school, um, learn about the, the psychological aspect of dogs and dog training, um, whether it be just your basic pets, um, um, behavioral modifications, and of course, like protection work, scent detection. I've, I've been able to line myself up with a lot of really knowledgeable instructor, instructors that have allowed me to come in, uh, whether it just be visiting or actually paying for a clinic to go through. And I've got a couple clinics coming up. Um, uh, it's she, actually. Yeah. She and she's working very well, and you'll be very proud um, of her. You did very good with uh, with that one. There are a lot of smart dogs from this uh, from this from Cindy. From Cindy, yep. Yeah, she's a, a very very good breeder um, over around the the Tifton area. So yeah. it's uh, it's one of those things that with with German Shepherds, man, they are so nutty because as Americans. Um, Americans, we will screw something up quick, and we'll do that because of this. Right. We want to make money, and ninety-nine percent of people, ninety-nine percent of pet owners, pick their if they get to pick the puppy, they're going to pick it by size or they're going to pick it by the colors. Right. Okay. Nine times out of ten, they're going to say, "Oh, I want the biggest one," or "I want the one with this color. I want it to look like this." <clears throat> not giving two craps about how the dog actually is. Whether right. it's stable, whether in a pack it stays back, or it's the front leader, or what. It's just they don't care about any of that. They look at they look at what the dog looks like. It's right. all aesthetics, right? Um, where over in Europe, um, they and like Germany, they're, they're a lot of their breeders, well, I will say German Shepherd breeders, Belgian Malinois breeders overseas, they are not allowed to breed two dogs unless both of them are titled, meaning both of them have shown stability, obedience, protection, drive. So they, they, they essentially, they're already taking two very good dogs, right? right? Letting them mate, um, they're taking the puppies, and then those breeders, man, they give zero Fs about a puppy. Like if the dog is not gonna fit the criteria, they dispose of it. Whereas over here, you know, we're a little bit more um, touchy-feely. We're like, ah, all dogs need good homes, you know, this, that, and the other. But um, what Cindy's doing over there, she's she's basically um, only breeding 
very, very top of the line right. dogs, right? So essentially, whereas, like I had a I had a message in my in my Facebook messages not too long ago that said, "Hey, I have a female German Shepherd. I like to breed. Do you know anybody?" I'm not even going to reply to that because chances are we don't need you breeding your shit dog. Like, and I'm not saying that like in a derogatory fashion, but it, we can't just go breeding uh, crap with crap or unpro- unproven uh, dogs with more unproven dogs, and then you end up getting crap, and then that's why the, the, the humane societies are flooding over because you have these dogs that are just nuts and I right. see it all the time I get dogs on the property German Shepherds to be you know just one example they are nuts man and they'll um, they're they're bite out of fear they're unstable they're they're constantly um, just uh, on edge all the time uh, and it's and it's sad because you again like I said earlier you can put a cat in the oven but he won't make it a biscuit you know they you might need biscuits yeah you can't you can't make a dog something it's not so having the opportunity to be around knowledgeable breeders and breeders that understand the breed and what to look for and a breeder that'll say hey look I'm going to sell you this dog but you can't breed the dog and a lot of people don't like to hear that but that's the breeder trying to be uh, sensible about these things and saying um, check EG L W G L Grand Champion Universal Champion Line. Yeah, she's basically saying that this is you know what she has that she's working with. Intelligence, drive, protection. Yep. Says we screw up puppies quick. Yeah, so I mean it's just it's just one of those things that um, um, as Americans we just we we can like Titus. You know he's a he's a great dog. He's a lovey dog. But that dog's not sleeping in my bed. Yeah. You know he's not. Um, he doesn't have. Um, a cushy. I mean, he's he's got his he's got what he needs, yeah. right? But at no point do we, and this is where we really go screwing dogs up. At no point do I treat him like a person, right? Okay. At no point do I say, oh, he needs a blanket, or he needs a toy, he needs something to snuggle up with. No, he's a dog. Now, in my opinion, he's better than a person, right? But at the same time, I'm not going to ruin him by giving him. The uh, what we would think, because this is what was that? My it's heart is stopped. <laughs> oh. How did the dog respond? No, he's still. It's these it's these crappy chairs that Jake bought. Yeah, um, but so the the big thing he is we um, we do this out of our emotions, right? Like people drop dogs off all the time. Like, well, I brought his toys, I bought his blanket. I was like, okay, take it home. We don't need that. Yeah. Because we buy a dog like PetSmart. There's nothing wrong with PetSmart. PetSmart's making money. But PetSmart is making money off of your emotional state. Right. The dog gives two craps about a toy. Right. You think you go out go out and look at a pack of coyotes. You see a, a plush Kong toy out there? No. No, not at all. Um, they don't care about it. We basically are humanizing these dogs and giving them these things, thus creating the issues for ourselves. You know, um, and that's you know that's my take on it anyway. And I, I believe I'm pretty accurate with that. No, she said the same thing. No, you don't humanize dogs. What do you think about uh, border collies? I like a border collie. Of course, I like high drive dogs. Yeah. You know, so dogs that other people would not normally like Australian shepherds. I call them assholes because that's what they are. I mean, they're dicks, all of them. Like, but they're so cool because they are such high drive dogs. Right. Like, and I love a high drive dog. I personally own four Malinois, a Dutch Shepherd, two high, very high drive German Shepherds, and a few Rottweilers. Now we also have the Dotsons and the Maltese and that kind of stuff too, and the yard dogs that you know kind of hang out. But I love a high drive dog. So I really the want two thousand. Sorry. No, nah, but Border Collie, very high drive dog. It says, I really want a 2015 Escalade. Brandon, so, uh, SO from Albany. Shout out from Albany. Jen, Jen Tracker, huge balls. Huge balls. Huge balls. What's up, guys? <laughs> we had five Dobies. 
love them compared to our two German Shepherds. Yeah, the Dobermans, um, and of course, I don't, I mean, this is no disrespect to Huge Balls there. But, uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt you also. <laughs> These things keep popping up, and yeah. I feel like an asshole for, for uh, not engaging these guys because they're literally here just to see us and hear what we're saying. So I hate to, but I also hate to interrupt you, so I'm, I'm, I'm caught between. Yeah, no, feel free to interrupt me, man. No, I feel bad, but, man. So the Doberman, as far as, uh, as far as that's concerned, that is concerned, we have basically bred all of the working characteristics out of the Doberman. It's like all show dogs now. And I'm not saying that his dog or her dogs or whatever, uh, I'm, I'm guessing with a screen name of Huge Huge Balls. Huge, huge Balls. Um, huge Balls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing it's a man. You got a uh, laugh out of it. Hugh. The guy, the name Hugh, and then G Balls. Huge Balls. Your dog's licking the ground. I guess they saw the puppy cam. I'm guessing there's... Maybe some some dust on the ground, some some uh, wood dust. Yeah, I mean he's on that Sawdust. little climb bench there, so um, there's no telling. But um, but yeah, the the Doberman, they um, they're a lot of show dogs, a lot of show lines, mm -hmm. and so there's very few working lines out there. But I like Dobermans. I've had several on the property. Um, I actually just had a, a couple come to our um, uh, what we call bike club there on Sundays. You say bike club? Bite. Bite club. Bite club. Like a playoff of fight club? Yeah. You know, I shouldn't even be talking about bike club. Yeah, you don't talk about bike club. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, so the Doberman is a, is a good dog, but you definitely have to find good breeders because they have... Um, what? <laughs> These fucking names, man. <laughs> <laughs> what is that one? <laughs> Just get in there and take a gander at that name. <laughs> I think maybe some of your friends have created names on Twitch just to come in here and comment. I don't honestly. I don't think anyone. I've done that. I've had friend. I've had people on the show that their friends came in for for those watching on face face Facebook. Somebody popped in with the name Perlapse Wreck Tum. Says I love doggos. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty sure I don't have any friends using Twitch. No, mm -hmm. that's a shame. I'm 41. All my friends are in bed right now. Fair enough. <laughs> You're feeling the same. You're like, geez, I, I need to be. Like, man, I gotta go home and feed dogs when I get home. Yeah. Um, there were some other questions. So, if anybody needs to get in touch with you, like, let's say they've got some kind of dog, or, or they 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 want to get training down, uh, how will they will they find you through? Uh, that over there or can they actually yeah. go to a website or well, contact you on Facebook you can contact me through any of the social media outlets um, I know we're on uh, on Google uh, Google listings we are on Instagram on Twitter <laughs> what you got now <laughs> yeah saggy knockers thanks <laughs> thanks for popping in <laughs> uh, he says uh, they normally find them at and then I, I don't know if that's actually that's my phone number is it really? Yeah. Sagan Ockers knows my phone number. So, which is... This is somebody who knows you? No. I mean, you can go to the web... My phone number's on the website. Oh, okay. Yeah. I Good mean, job, Sagan Ockers. You cracked the case. It's uh, Robbie Man. It's Robbie Man. Uh-huh. Hey, Robbie. You have a friend named Robbie? I have some friends named Robbie. Oh, okay. Oh! What's going on, like, yeah. man? Okay, so He's like, no, none of my friends. I'm I'm old. None of my friends have a Twitch. Okay, well, one of his friends, uh, huge balls. <laughs> I have no idea huge if balls. my friends have huge balls. Um, but um, so yeah, uh, Robert Ayers is out of um, gosh, uh, Missouri maybe. Um, you want to? All right, so this Cindy's kind of got the lock on the German Shepherds down here. This guy breeds um, old-fashioned, straight-back, large German Shepherds. Um, they're called Ayers Legends. And, um, uh, what do you say? It says, alright man, I thought we were, it says, come on man, I thought we were cooler than that. 
And then Cindy says, I have two beautiful Rottweilers that are AKC. I'm not a Rotty person. I would love, I'd be interested in anybody who knows. Uh, I'd be, okay. I'm not a Rotty person. Would you be interested or know anyone if the lines are right? Okay. Um, but back to, back to Robert Ayers. Um, Ayers Legends, German Shepherds. I've had the opportunity to work with uh, several of his and, um, and man, they're some amazing dogs too. Uh, they, uh, they really are. They're, um, he's um, a bit out of, I mean, he's nowhere near us. I mean, obviously the dogs have to be shipped in, but, um, but definitely check, definitely check him out. He's got some good stuff as well. And that's the thing about the, the business that I'm in. I have been able to um, meet some phenomenal, not only trainers, but, um, but breeders. Yeah, it says no caller ID. I'm well, that's because they posted uh, your phone number on Twitch that people are <laughs> calling you up now. Yeah, how about that? So, um, but um, but the, the the big thing is, um, I have been able to meet some really cool people in this field, whether it yeah. be breeders um, and and or trainers or decoys or helpers. You know things like that, um, and it's uh, it's been phenomenal uh, to to meet some of the people. And the, the thing about breeding, like if you come to me and you said, <laughs> if you said, you know, hey man, I want a Rottweiler. You know, I could point you in the direction of a Rottweiler. If you said, hey man, I want a German Shepherd, I would say, hey, Cindy's over here, not too far down the road. Robert is up north a little bit. Uh, you know, call. You know, it just depends on what you want, what you're right. looking for. Um, and the great thing about that, if and and Malawa, I mean, whatever, whatever you're looking for, because I'm in the position I'm in, I can point you in the right direction and give you some options. Right. Whereas I had a lady call me um, call me earlier that bought a German Shepherd from a pet store, okay, and they're having problems with it, and of course they're going to have problems with it because it's from a pet store, and I'm not knocking. Um, Yes, I am knocking pet stores. I don't like buying dogs from pet stores. I don't believe that pet stores give a rat's behind about what you need for your family. Um, I think that if you're going to buy a dog, you should go to a reputable breeder. Um, yeah. And that's that's my stance on that. And um, Now, if you are an adopt, not shop kind of person, this, that's, that's another thing. I'm a huge... I've got three uh, rescues at the house right now from the um, Albany Humane Society. Um, and it's one of those things that I believe in that, but I believe also that when you go and adopt a dog, you have no idea what his history was. Right. Um, so therefore, like I posted on Facebook <clears throat> the other day that I was looking for a lab puppy, and someone commented, why don't you go adopt one from the Humane, Humane Society? No, I get that, but I'm looking for a client. Right. I'm not looking for myself. I'm looking for a client. The client wants a lab puppy that we want to get on narcotics, that we want to get to be able to um, indicate on drugs. Right. I can't do that if I don't know what I'm starting with. Right. You don't know his past. You don't know if it's been beaten. You don't know. What, yeah. You, know, it, you don't know what what kind of past it has. So it's hard to to build something that you don't really know its foundation. Um, or build on something when you don't know its foundation. Yeah, the um, the big thing with um, um, roast beef curtains, such a cute carpet. My, <laughs> <laughs> who are these people, man? <laughs> roast beef curtains. People are creating names just to pop in here. Prolapse rectum, uh, saggy knockers, huge uh, balls, roast beef curtains. Uh, that is funny to me. Roast beef curtains. That's that's good. Yeah. That's good. Um, these are great names. Thanks, guys, for creating these names and creating a, a twitch with these names. Uh, Raina Russell, you should uh, be knocking pet stores. Uh, you should be knocking pet stores. They're awful. Thank you for saying that. Cindy said. Yeah. Cindy and uh, Raina. Um, all right. So whoever's calling... I can't answer the phone right now. Like I'll I'll hit you up tomorrow. It yeah, they're still going to call. You should so. answer it and put it on the microphone. 
Hey, yo, what's up? Hey, brother, what you do? Well, I'm doing a show right now. What are you doing? Hey, brother, I'm trying to get my laugh handled right now. I tell you what, this fucker, I tell you what, looks like an Aussie running around trying to slap up crazy squirrels on the other bullshit. <laughs> Who is this? What? Who is this? It's just a random person. You can call me Cleet, brother. I can call you what? Cleet. Okay, Cleet. What's your I real name? Cleet. This is interesting. This is good. I've never had this. All right, so Cleet, tell me. Yeah, what's your, what's your mama call you, Cleet? My real name's Brandon. Okay. And you're from Dawson? Yes, sir. All right. Have we met before? Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, I moved from Albany not too long ago. Okay. No, you ain't met me yet. Okay. This is good. Well, Brandon, what? Do what? Go ahead. I live down there at 1510 Gasser Road, Albany, Georgia. And uh, I moved up here to Dawson. You moved, you lived at 1510 Gasser. Yep. And now you live in Dawson. I now live in Dawson. And how long has it been since you lived at 1510 Gasser? Oh, it's been a hot minute. Is this somebody you know? No, that's my address. Oh, they they found you on social media. Oh, no, I was parking some girl named Christy down that way, and she let me live with her. Hmm. Well, I don't know a Christy. I hadn't lived with a Christy in no, years. I reckon not. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, so uh, are you? Is this? Uh, yeah, but I was okay. This is so awful. <laughs> you can hang up at any time. You want. No. Hey, so 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 Brandon, for real, is this a real call or are you just wanting to bust my balls? Uh, no, nah, I'm just trying to get my dog fixed. All right. Well, hey man, you know where I'm located. If you want to bring that dog out, bring him on. I'm a sick him on you. <laughs> All, right. All right, do that. I like I'd like a lab to be sicked on me. That would be fun. Sorry, dude. That's all right. <laughs> I don't know how. Um, but um, but yeah, that's uh, that's uh, okay. One of those things. All right. But um, but yeah. So Twitch. Twitch. That's thanks, Twitch. Thanks. Yeah. I don't know, man. I can't tell you. I don't know who that that was, but um. What a heck! What the heck! Yeah. What a yeah. Heck. So, Anyways, anything else we want to talk about? No, well, so if anybody needs to get in contact with you, uh, yeah, besides obviously, obviously this, um, and they want to get, you know, maybe a, they got a dog, they want to get trained up, or they, they need something, they can contact you down over here. Yep. Um, I'd call the law. It's probably that person. <laughs> okay, but this is weird to me. I've never had this before. This is a very <laughs> unique experience. Uh, I'm sure it is for him as well. Um, all this stuff is public information, I'm sure, if they go to your... Oh, yeah. Like, if you go to the um, uh, revolutionarycanine.com, it's got, you know, some, some pictures, some literature about the training packages and things like that that we, that we offer. Um, it's, it has contact information, you know. And the thing is, it's um, uh, text is usually best, you know, because I'm just not going to... Um, um, to just pick up the phone usually I'm probably honestly the way the business is going right now um, if you call you're probably gonna it's probably gonna go to voicemail yeah. you know unless I'm just at the right moment because if I'm in the kennels getting dogs out or if I'm out cleaning or working or if I'm training a dog I'm not gonna answer the phone that's just how it is uh, if I'm doing a TV show I'm usually not gonna answer the phone that so. was that was one that just flooded us over and over again and yeah. I said hey this could be a uni unique experience and it was that. It was, yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah. So text is probably best. But um, but yeah, you can reach reach us through the the website. It's you got can a just little, write an email or something. They can contact. They, they got a little little page on there that you can you know kind of just type out something and say, hey, look, this is what I got. This is what's going on. Yeah. Um, the the fortunate thing about what I'm doing now is I usually book out like I've got maybe two or three spots left open for April. Uh, March is completely booked already. And I've actually take, started taking dogs for uh, for May. Yeah, and you said you started to cut that back, right? Because the more yep. the more you take in, the less you can actually focus on your life and your your dogs as well. Yeah, and and that's the that's the big thing. You just want to make sure that there's that that balance, right? You know that balance in there. But um, you don't overwork yourself or the dogs. 
Yeah. Or yeah. So absolutely. Um, so, but yeah. So any of the social media outlets, Facebook, um, um, Facebook, you can do uh, Instagram direct messaging. I, I know there's a, a thing on Google where if you look it up on Google, then there's a way to contact through there. Okay. Um, my Google or my business Google or whatever it's called. But um, but yeah, so the best way to get into contact with me would either be through one of those social media outlets or the website itself. Right. That's so, awesome. But yeah, man. Absolutely. Yeah, we're going to tie it down. I don't think we're going to tap into these other beers. I'll probably just keep them for another because we're hitting 1228. Uh, we just got into conversations, you know. We talked about dogs, you know, and <laughs> pulled out the, uh, the mitt. Had a good time. Yeah, I enjoyed it, man. Yeah, so man. definitely, guys, let me know if there's anything, you know, any other questions that you have, and maybe we can just do this again. You know, we'll, uh, you know, down the road. Yeah, hopefully, Cleet won't call us up. <laughs> I don't. I still um, don't know about that, but that, that sure, made for a I'm, funny experience. I'm sure I know that guy from somewhere down the road, but obviously, it's been years <clears throat> because the person he referenced has been out of my life since like 2011. So. Um, so that was it's somebody a, who knows you that's jerking your chain. Yeah. And tomorrow they're gonna be like, dude, I totally con that was me online. I did that. And you're yeah. like, dude, never do that. No, it's fine, man. I'm up for a joke. Like I really Well like, yeah, you were obviously having a good time with I mean, it. You were laughing. You were so laid offended. back with stuff like that. So but uh, um, Cleet sounds like a stand up guy. So, I appreciate it's fun. Thanks, Robert, for popping in, asking yep. questions. Thank Thanks you guys for, so much for, for hanging out with us this late in the night. Yeah, check us out. Here we are. That's that's him. That's me. Um, never meet Cleet IRL. All right, guys. <laughs> We're going to stop reading these. It's been an awesome <laughs> night. Thank you for coming in, enlightening these people on all this. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Jake should be back from his trip. We have Hannah Barnes coming on next week, jamming, playing music, keyboards. Uh, yeah, have a good night. Thanks, Cindy, for popping in. Ciao.